Guys, I want, we want to welcome you to another edition of the new Jack Swing podcast with myself, Stevie Street, and Sheldon Taylor. How are you guys doing? Good evening, chaps. Hello, good evening. <laughs> yeah. Got a big yeah. one tonight, a big one tonight, as we yeah. always have. Please. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, we definitely can't wait until our special guest, Corel Henderson. I mean, can you imagine? He was there in the beginning, kids at work. He was with Teddy and T Timmy. His whole story about missing out on, on being in Guy and because he, he had his own idea. So it's going to be interesting to see how he ranks the Guy album, which he probably could have been singing in instead of Aaron. So that would be interesting. But before that, we've got our, we have Marcel, Oscar Flavor. How are you all? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, but before we do that, any... Um, any news this past week that we want to um, the show show tell the, the fans uh, audience about anything that has happened over the past week musically? Well, maybe you might have brought it up um, with the last episode from yesterday. Obviously, for uh, the Neptunes, you know their issues with the name, and Pharrell put out a, a free album. Yeah, you, you know what? It it was quite interesting. Yes, on his birthday, he, he gave out. Uh, hey, hey, Mac, welcome, welcome. He gave out a free album on his birthday, and I don't know if this is damage control or unless he had always planned to do that. Um, but what was interesting is once this was going on, I just had to remember the interviews I've had with people like Tammy and M Mucho and, and people who <clears throat> knew them when they were kids and tried to see you know, just what they made of, of, of the Neptunes. And it, and it very... Everyone was looked for uh, Chad was the musical genius, you know, he was the guy who, but Pharrell was the visionary. And if and Pharrell was going places and he carried people along, so it's a sad thing for you know for that breakup, but we hopefully they can resolve it going forward. Um, okay, so we do have uh, Corell is joining us shortly, so we, he, he's logged in, but we'll we'll we'll. we'll We'll, we'll bring him in shortly. But just another thing. Any um, The other thing I just wanted to touch quickly was last week um, we had the um, R&B block, block party, um, um, which is when we had all the acts that came to Wembley. I, last minute, Blackstreet invited me. I went down to see them. Um, it was okay. And um, people, don't forget to listen to that Cowboy Carter. <laughs> When Texas Hold 'em Up came out, I was saying, "Well, that's a good track." I've listened to the whole album, and I gave it about, a, I think, a seven or eight out of ten, okay. and it, it, it isn't bad. So, you know, I, you know, guys, look, listen to it, and, and let us know how you how, how you rate it and stuff. Um, I'm going to bring Corel in. Um, hey. I'm going to move things around. <laughs> hey, Corel, how you doing? How you been? Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. I'm glad you can join us today. I want to introduce you to my. My co-host Stevie Street. Hello, sir. Hey, and, how you doing? What's, what's the name? And about? Sheldon, uh, Stevie. Stevie, so and Sheldon, and Sheldon. Hey, okay. Clara, how you doing, my brother? How you doing, now? All right. All right. Yes, I mean, I'm. I do remember um, one of the things Sheldon sent me probably two or three years ago was all the clippings of you know when you guys kids at work signed with Gene and all the pictures and and he used to write extensively around that era. So, um, oh. your your interviews really. The interview we did really gave filled in a lot of holes in the whole story and stuff like that. So it's going to be great having you on this journey with us as we go through a groundbreaking album, the Guy album. Yeah, um, I've, been, um, I've been um I've been um hanging out with Teddy recently, working with him recently. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, hey, we're going to get a lot, a lot of excuses, exclusive tonight and stuff. So we yeah, definitely welcome you in. Um, well, before we start on on, on that, um, Steve, was there anything that you wanted to add for the past week? Just um... Um, I'll, I'll give a shout to Colin Mills, who's just dropped a, a, a message there. Colin was part of a group, a UK New Jack group in the early nineties <laughs> called Boys in Control, and he's let out a demo that he recorded back then, which is now on YouTube. Boys in Control, check it out. Produced by Lindsley. Who was a bit of a bit of a name on the UK R and B scene in the nineties? Remix stuff for for um, is it what they called the Lighthouse Family? He did loads of remixes. Remixes for Guy, um, but Boys in Control demo is out now. If you want to on YouTube, if you want to check that out, 
bit of New Jack history. And I've also got a story for Mr. Clarell as well, which is going to blow his mind a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, Clara, do you want to um, well? Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I know you're vocal coach, but it'd be great just to, it's for those who are joining in, um, who who might be like, who's this? Who's who's joining them today? Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> sure. Okay. So as you know, my name is Clarell Henderson. I used to be in a group with Teddy Riley when we were kids. A uh, group called Kids at Work that morphed into Guy. You know, with Aaron. You know, taking my 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 spot. Well, a spot that you know that was vacant <laughs> that was once <worth> mine. <laughs> I, 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 I eventually became a vocal coach. I, I have a, a place. I have a school called N, called Vocal Charm School. It's um NYC Vocal Charm School on Instagram and Vocal Charm School on, on YouTube as well. And that's what I do right now. And that's what I'm doing right now. And that's why. Yeah. I, and I was actually um. I was actually in the studio with Teddy and them when they were doing the guy album. Wow. So yeah, we, we yeah, we we've we've yeah, so what our plan today is that we've um the ten songs on the guy album and we what we want we're gonna do is each we're gonna start from the ten and each of us are gonna say, Well, what what's the t our least favorite on the album to number one, what's our most favorite? And and we'll go it's around Robins and and we go around and it'd be great for you to, th to also have your ideas to okay you know who do, who would I put that what 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 my least favorite on the album to my most favorite okay um, yes well Stevie because I started last week so Stevie you wanna you wanna go oh, then let's then... let's get a bit of bit of background on Clarell first because it's the stuff I wanna it's stuff I wanna ask say it again okay go ahead yeah Clarell there's just a few bits that I know you've already done an interview with Namdi you know. Hold on just a second. Let me just turn this air conditioning down because I, can, I can't hear you guys that well. Okay. <laughs> the old air conditioning there playing. Up. <laughs> he's, got a nice, um, he's got a nice plant in the background there, hasn't he? Yeah, he plays the guitar and the drums and the keys. And the bass. <laughs> and the bass. Okay, yeah, just rub that in. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Stevie. Yeah, there's just a few a few things. I know you've done an interview uh, with Namdi quite a while ago, which I did watch, and you, you revealed a lot of gems in that. Um you were talking about you had a deal on the table for MCA Records. Can you elaborate a bit more about that? Well, I mean, there's not only only there's not only there's not much to elaborate on. Only in that I turned it down before it was actually, you know, what I mean, any paperwork, you know, drawn up or anything. I had a had a had an independent deal at the time, and uh. A friend, a mutual friend of ours named Dave Peasley, who worked with Teddy and them, who helped them get, get signed, he called me and told me that Teddy and them, Teddy and Gene had a had a had a, a solo deal for me on MCA, which I'm sure they could have gotten by now because Guy was already really, really hot at that point. And I turned it down because I was already signed and I wanted to be loyal to the people I was already signed to, which was pretty much a dumb thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking if you would have signed that deal and they'd have give you an album to make, who do you think would have worked on it production wise? I'm just playing devil's advocate here well, or I, just I, I would imagine that Teddy would have. This is what I'm thinking. What have we yeah. missed out on here? What have um, we missed out? I'm thinking, what have we missed out? We could have missed out on one of the greatest new Jack solo albums of all time, mate. <laughs> Burrell Henderson produced by Teddy Riley and I don't know, Gerald Levert and do it, you know, Alton Wookie Stewart. It could have been a magical new Jack album that we yeah, never it got. Could have been. It could have been. It could have been. I don't I don't know. I really don't know. You know what I mean? Who knows? I mean, when when after you after you released Her Town, which you said wasn't the mix that you originally did, had you recorded other like New Jack style tracks around that time? Wait, I'm sorry. You said have have I recorded? New no, yeah. Around? around the time you released, was it her town? Do you remember that your single? Her town, yeah. Had you had you made any other like New Jack Swing type tracks or demos? Hmm. I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. But I was more. I was more into what New Edition was doing and what and what the Jackson Five had done years before. You know what I mean? So I was literally trying to recreate that. You know what I mean? I was still, I guess I was still doing bubblegum when 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 Teddy and them was still doing more of the adults, you know, New Jack Swing style. You know what I mean? 
and we both know who 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 was right out of the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> so what what led? So, so, so on, Sheldon. I'm sorry. So so what led you to kind of like stay in that lane in terms you of know, the, the Ralph Trust new that, edition? I, I just love the Jackson Five so much. Like to this day, to this day, I still recreate. I I, I recreate songs that feel something like what they did you know what i mean it's, i just loved it so much where it could have it could have even hurt me at the time you know what i mean because the world was ready for what teddy was bringing forth and the first indication of that was before we broke up we had a we had gotten back together at some point we did a demo and we had we had a few songs on the demo and it was a song called so bad on the demo that sounded it was like really a it was a lot like new edition and i was singing lead and then it was a song that Teddy had. Matter of fact, Teddy had um, did a, had Teddy had did a song on Boy George called "Don't Take My Mind Don't Take My Mind on a Trip." It was originally his song. He sang lead on that song originally when he was a wow. kid. Yeah, and it, it, to me it was better. And that song was on the demo. That song was on the demo. And the record company that that I managed I took it to at the time they they liked that one more than they liked the one I did, or the one I sang on. You know what I mean? That I felt should have been a single. So, a, 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 you know, apparently the world was, for some reason, the world was getting more, you know, into that sound that Teddy was about to bring forth. You know, and Teddy, t Teddy was trying to bring forth that sound since he was like 15, 16 years old. People mm -hmm. don't know that. Teddy came to us with that sound before Kids at Work even came out. So what and was we, his, what was his approach with, as far as, as far as the equipment and production? Back I then. mean, you know, he the he would use the what's that called? The, what's the drum the drum machine from from back in the eighties? The DM the D DMX DX over behind DX, DX from, yeah over, DMX yeah. yeah that was his go to drum machine at the time. You know what I mean? He he'd also would use the DD one drum machine. Fork, you know yeah. what I mean? The, the uh, what was that keyboard? It was a keyboard that everybody used DX fifty um, RX RX seven DX, DX seven no. RX seven Yamaha really the Yamaha wow, yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boy, you really know your equipment, boy. <laughs> yeah, that, all that stuff. Yeah, that, that was his go-to. You know, at that point, Teddy was basically a one-man band. You know what I mean? Teddy, I think technology, I think had technology, I think had technology somehow miraculously did not become better and better, I think Teddy would be even better than, than he currently is. You know what I mean? Because in the old days, you had to rely on your chops because there was no, you know, there were less overdubbing and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So you, a lot of times he would play from start to finish. He had to play, he would play each part from start to finish. You know what I mean? That, that keeps your chops up more. You know what I mean? And you have to rely on your talent more so than the technology. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just think that he would have been, e I think, I think he would have been even better than he actually yeah, is. Tony Bennett's son, when they were, I guess, in Soundworks or wherever they were in New Jersey, that he was talking about uh -huh. how he was playing uh -huh. that stuff like live in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, he was. In those days, he was. In those days, he was. He was. He really was. He's a tech. Teddy, Teddy is a technology buff. Like to this day, like about him, I worked with him about a month ago, and he's all the way up on what's going on. He's, you know, he's into the AI thing and everything. You know what I mean? He's like, one thing about him, he don't he he cha he changes with the times. He knows exactly what's going on, as if he's twenty years old. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good to find out that your relationship with him has, you know, despite the success with Guy and and stuff, that you guys you still maintain a, a good relationship um, as well. Because it's not it's not his it's it's not his fault. He has nothing to do with my lack of success. It's my own choices. You know what I mean? Like me not being a platinum, a platinum pop artist, you know what I mean? That, you know, it, ha it has a lot more to do with me just being shy. I'm not, always been the type of person that you could have a million dollars and I could, I could, I could um owe rent and I wouldn't ask you for a dime. You know what I mean? Out of just out of like I've never, I've never asked him for anything. I never asked him for any. Like I've hung out with him, riding around his car, or I've been in his house or whatever, and he, I never asked him for anything. You know what I mean? If he doesn't offer it, I'm not asking for it. So that's a that's a good thing, but it's a, also a bad thing because I never asked for a record deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but that's it is but what that's it is. very unique though because you know 
a lot of those artists, that's one of the things that they have. They don't mind helping people, but it's like a catch-22, is that everybody has their hand out or whatever. So in your case, yeah. their relationship is still equitable because you're dealing on the strength of friendship. You know, so it allows yeah. you all to, like you said, to, to come back and work together and things like that. So that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, because I work, I work with him. I, I, I'm around him with this mindset. What can I bring to the table? Can I make your life easier? You know what I mean? Do you ha are you overwhelmed? Do you need me to write this song for you? Do you need me to play this for you? You know what I mean? That's why I always let him know I can do this. I can do that. You know what I mean? He had me write a song for him about about a month and a half ago. You know what I mean? And you know we got to get back on it. You know. That that makes his life easier as as opposed to saying we used to be down back in the day. Can I get a <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't get down like that. I'm a I'm a man, I'm, yeah. I make my own money. You know what I mean? Um Colin Axe did uh, there was this Bobby Brown had a song called She's My Lady. Was that it sounded was that kids at work song? Exactly, kids at work, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was um yeah. I mean he used that 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 was basically based off of the kids at work song. We 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 um we had um, you know, royalties for that. He <laughs> was single for that. Huh? Ben, what did you it's say? Steve? Single, because I've got it on. A, I've got it on a twelve inch. It was a remix album that 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 Teddy had did with um Bobby Brown. A re, it was some kind of remix yeah. or something. Remix yeah, in the key of B. And, remix is in the yeah. key of B. No, but on the kids at work, wow. there was a twelve inch single. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> this guy really knows his stuff. He said, "Mixed in the key of B." Wow! Yeah, where, where you, in the key where of B. From, yeah. Where are you? I from? live in Delaware. I live oh, in you Delaware. Live in Delaware. Oh, you right near yeah, me? Okay, because yeah. right now, right now, I'm in New York. Oh. I, I'm, I travel between New York and Baltimore. You know what I mean? And okay. So, and, and you know, I'm eventually got to go back to Dallas with Teddy and them. Like next week, I think next week or the week after. Yeah. yeah, I mean, one of the things you'd wow. find that um, so Sheldon is like a historian, so he writes, and he, you know, he, he he's, a, he's a historian, and Stevie is um, he, he he's a wizard when it comes to um, New Jack Swing or album collectors. So yeah. um, between two of them, um, they they will make uh, anyone surprised. So <laughs> don't wow. worry about that. You, you yeah, really they've only just stuff. started. You do already just started. Thank but, you, man. Yeah. So. Um, but you know, along the way, as we start this, because we're we're, we're going to get you to 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 to, uh, to to give us some insights and into stuff. But yeah, if we start out with number ten, and then when you're giving your stuff, we can start adding some stuff in there. Um, what Stevie Sheldon number ten? I'll yeah, let Sheldon, I like Sheldon. Okay. Yeah, I, I start off with my number ten. My number ten is uh, my business. You know, listening to that record. Um, <laughs> You know, and you're laughing at it, but the thing is, one thing about that record is very, it's kind of unique in terms of the songwriting because it's like a direct, forceful songwriting approach that's kind of in the same vein as my prerogative. It's, it's an aggressive, it's an, it's an, I won't say it's an aggressive song, but the songwriting is very assertive because when you look at what the subject matter that Timmy's talking about, it's kind of like in the vein of, of the my prerogative aspect lyrically, but um Obviously, there were a lot of strong records in terms of the up tempos or whatever, but that's that's my number ten. You know, that was a demo too. That was a demo with Kids at Work. Wow. Yeah, T Timmy, 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 and Teddy had produced that. You know, when we were still when we, when we were still in the group together. Yeah. And who was singing lead on on that then? Well, time? Timmy was. Timmy was singing lead on that. Okay. Okay. I always like, for the most part, I always like the demos better than the records. I like, I think the demo was was even better than the record. I mean, vocally, you were the lead singer. Did Timmy get any chance to sing on Kids at Work, or was it mainly just going to be you? <sighs> well, eventually, originally, it was both me and Timmy singing lead, and then you know, for some reason, oh. the producer we had pushed <laughs> Timmy all the way in the background and and pushed me all the way up front, which is what which is what killed Kids at Work. I, I to this day I hate I hate that decision. Yeah, I mean you did mention it that um, they they took a lot of out. Yeah, I mean, it's Gene. I, my, you know I can't really blame the producer. It probably was Gene's idea because Gene, you know, Gene nobody's gonna do nothing that Gene don't want don't want done, don't want done. So Gene must must have um, agreed agreed to it. But Gene is the one that convinced Timmy convinced the producer to let Timmy sing the one part he did sing on Kids at Work. So who knows? Mm. Who knows? No. Stevie, what's your number 10? Um, before I reveal that, I'd just like to say that 
there's, for me, and I, I guess for a lot of people, unless you don't like ballads, there's no skips on this album for me. I can listen to it from start to finish. It probably is the greatest New Jack album of all time. If I was compiling my 10 to 1 when I was 18, it's probably very different to what it is now because obviously we've grown up with this album over 35 years. Um, some of the tracks production-wise over that time, time period, I feel, are a bit ropey. Some of that, you know, you, you listen to it and you think maybe that hasn't that sound hasn't stood the test of time. So that's reflected in my 10 down to one. Like like number 10 now, this would have been further up at, when I was 18 because I'd just I'd be just slamming it on on my uh, speakers on my vinyl player. But surprisingly, I'm gonna go at number 10, don't clap, just dance. For that wow. reason, the reason the production sounds a bit it's a great track i love it to death but it's a bit ropey it's a bit 30 years on bit bit clattery but it's still a great track but that's my number 10. wow you know as a as a 49 year old there's an eight <laughs> it probably <laughs> number three, but for anyone joining us right now um who just joined us we've got our special guest Carol henderson who was the lead singer of Kids at Work, which was at Chlorel, Timmy Gatlin, and Teddy Riley. And he was around when the Guy album was made, and he's still friends with Teddy. But what we're doing today, we're looking at the Guy album and counting down from our least favorite on the Guy album down to number one, which is our most favorite. Um, so mine is um, the song that I, 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 I don't know. This was and uh, maybe because I, of the whole Timmy giving me the interview about each song on it, but I'd never liked round and round, merry go round, uh, merry go round of love. I, it was just, it just felt like after Groove Me, it was like it just went, well, what's this? It's almost like the Gap Band going old school. So I was never a big fan of that, especially the, and maybe because I've heard the story about how Gene and Teddy wrote it behind Timmy's back, almost like saying, let's get, you know, let's do some stuff here. But I, I was never a big fan of, of that track. So that's always my least favorite. And the one I skip all the time. Um, that's, that's my note. Temp. So, okay. What well, for yourself, Carol? If you're thinking about your your least favorite, what would be your least favorite on the album? What's the down? What would we not? What's the name of that? Um, the other the other ballad, not "Peace of My Love," but the other ballad. Goodbye, love. Goodbye, love. For some reason, that I listen to that the least. I just listen okay. to that the least. It just, I, it's not like I like them all, but. You know, that's the one I listen to the least. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be an interesting show today. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we've got to, we got down. Uh, Sheldon, you know, let's you know look, at, look ahead. You know what also can be? That's the only, that's the only song that I didn't hear before, before the record came out. Oh. Everything else I had an experience with. Matter of fact, no, no, I take that back. I didn't, I never heard um, Peace of My Love as well. I never heard Peace of My Love and I never heard Goodbye, Goodbye Love. Love. Every other song, every other song I heard before before the album came out. Okay, okay. Wow. Um, Sheldon, what makes your number, what's number nine for you? Okay, my number nine is uh, Round and Round, Merry Go Round and Love. But I need to clarify something, Clarell. Was that the first single? The first single, the, yeah, because I was doing my research and I saw that no. that was that was released like a month before Groove Me, so I don't know. It if, was, yeah, I was doing some research and they had that album that, that came out like a month before Groove Me, and I know ah, the video the video was in heavy rotation, but I don't really? know if it because the song, yeah, they had a video for it that was in heavy rotation on BT, but I was yeah, it just threw me for a loop, like, like wow, why wow, is this the very first song? But then when I look at the date. That it was released it was released in april of 88 but then groovy comes out in may of 88 so i'm thinking that maybe you know merry go around wasn't really a, such a strong strong single and they just put out groovy you know right behind it but i wanted to just kind of clarify if you went since you were in the studio when these records were being made i wasn't in the studio when when round and round was being made because round and round me and teddy had ran into each other in, in downtown and he that's the first song he showed me Mm -hmm. That's the first song he showed me. Then, then shortly after that, he, had, you know, I went to his house, and I would that would be there while they, while they were, you know, re recording a lot of this stuff. But yeah, that's the first song he showed me. 
I don't. I never knew that that was a single before before Groove Me. Wow. That's why I, was, I saw the dates. I was like, wow. And it it does it makes sense for the fact that when Timmy explained that when he was out, that was probably one of the last songs they recorded that was made. However, it was made behind his back, and Gene had some writing credits on there. Oh, and it okay. made sense that Gene was trying to say, you know, Timmy's he's gone. Let's push this out first. My single, my kind of stuff, not given without Timmy. And it, and he did. Timmy did say that Uptown uh, MCA weren't happy about it because it wasn't the strongest song. Um, and probably so it can make sense if that was trying to if Gene was trying to push that first. It wasn't getting the rotation that Groovy was getting on the radio. Mm. But it, you know, so that that could make some sense. But yeah, it, yeah. So Sheldon, yeah, it's it's in your it's your, your number nine as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Stevie, what about you? What's what's your number nine? Guy always they've always had comparisons to the Gap Band, and I felt the most Gap Band sounding track on the album was Round and Round. Um, it's my number nine. I do love the track. I love the extended twelve, as I do the Don't Clap twelve. Both brilliant twelve inches with all the mixes, but just because it had that P funk baseline to it going round and round but it's my number nine great track okay um what was interesting is when i interviewed timmy he disliked round and round because obviously when i interviewed damon damon said man round and round was my favorite <laughs> and he said he he didn't like my business so it was really <laughs> strange having them both you know having both of them saying you know having that sort of back and back but um if i go to my number nine it would be my least favorite would be my business because it just um as much as it's okay but it just didn't fit it's as it wasn't one of the strongest ones in there now timmy did say that a lot of it was um him, him showcasing that attitude of man why are you asking me those questions man leave me leave me my business i do things the way i want to do um and and, and he said he, you know one of the issues he had was when he was seriously trying to look to get married and move out, and he was trying to sing this uh, against Gene and, and everyone who had issues with him. But um, as I said, it end, ends ends the album. Um, but probably, yeah, probably, it, it, yeah, my least favorite, aren't, uh, uh, second to least favorite. You, what, what what would make your sort of second that, to that's last the same least for favorite? For me, the same for me is on my business. Um, I always felt that my business. Um, was something that it just sounds like it, it sounds it sounds like it should be on a different album. It doesn't sound it doesn't sound like the rest of the album to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It really it just doesn't. And and you know, also I'm partial to the demo. I think the demo was better. Wow. I think the demo was better. You know what I mean? The demo was like done on a, I think an A track or something like that. <laughs> and I think it was better. So Timmy's writing this around the time where he is is being um, forced out. We, we did you know about what was happening, the dynamics, and how Gene was trying to? I didn't know. I didn't know at the time because I was such an immature kid, but and so silly. But I did. I did notice a disconnect. I noticed a disconnect because. Right before they came out, right before they, they, I don't know if they were signed or right before they came out, I know I, I went with Teddy and um, I went with Aaron to Gene's house yeah. to sp- stay the weekend. And I just noticed that Timmy wasn't there and he wasn't calling that much and he wasn't on the phone that much. Like he called one time the whole weekend we were there. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I remember, you know, thinking to myself, why isn't he here? Why didn't he come? You know what I mean? And when he did come, you know, it, it wasn't, I mean, when he did call, it just wasn't the most joyful wasn't the most joyful um, conversation, you know what I mean? So I noticed, mm. I noticed a, a, a lack of, I noticed a disconnect at the time. So that's probably when they were starting to go through whatever they were going through. Yeah, Gene, so- for those of us who don't know Timmy, um, and Timmy himself has described his personality, but you've known him since you were kids. I mean, is is Timmy an alpha male like Gene, and, and or what was his person? Yeah, Timmy. Timmy's a leader type guy. He's a leader type guy. It's just I'm I'm really honestly I believe that that's the main reason why God didn't work out as far as with Timmy in the group because Timmy and Gene are both leaders. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's just not going to work with two two alpha males. It's not. 
it's not going to work. You know what I mean? I pretty much would, me and Teddy would pretty much go along with what, whatever Timmy wanted. You know what I mean? And what Timmy wanted to me, in my opinion, in, in the old days, in the old days, excuse me, was, was, was good stuff. You know, he had great ideas and, and he knew how to bring, bring things to, to fruition. So me and Teddy basically followed behind Timmy. So when wow. Gene came into the picture, it became, you know, it became a conflict, even with kids at work. You know what I mean? There was a time I remember when, when Timmy came to the studio late and, and Gene, you know, kicked him out the studio and made him go home. You know what I mean? That never happened with, 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 with me and Teddy. So it's just an alpha male thing. You know what I mean? Because and I mean, you got to look at it from from Timmy's perspective. He came into the situation as a leader. He, we we were signed to kids. We were signed as kids at work. Timmy was basically the leader. He sang most of the stuff. He wrote everything, and wow. he or, he organized a lot of it. You know what I mean? And he he was pushed all the way to the background, like all the way to the background. And me and Timmy always had dreams of doing the the the, uh, the Michael Jermaine thing. You know what well, I mean? The co-lead, the co-lead. Yeah, mm -hmm. co-leading and singing off of each other. You know what I mean? And they totally, completely changed that dynamic. So by the time we was um, almost done with the Kids at Work album, Timmy was like, bro, I mean, I, I'm just assuming that he was like, what, am, what is my purpose? You know what I mean? I'm only singing background when this was my band. Tim, Timmy put me in the group. He put me in the group. So it's like, it's weird. You know what I mean? Hmm. Just, just answer, um, M. Mac was asking why Timmy was put on the uh, album. Timmy didn't sign over his rights to Gene, so MCA could not put out the Guy album without Timmy's permission. And they had to pay him to put out the album, and they had to, they couldn't put out the album without his uh, image on it because they'd already done the video, the photo shoots, and everything. So that's that was that was why he, you know, unlike the rest, he didn't sign over anything to Gene. So he still had total control over the, the release. He could have said, "No, we're not going to release the album," and they couldn't have released it. So he was paid to get the album released and also to make sure his image was still on the on, on the album. Yeah, Timmy is smart. The RN, smart. Timmy is the R and B Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know who I am. You know who I am. I'm. I'm the. What's the. What's the guy name? Um, that used to be with N.W.A. but was never. Was never. Was named something Prince. Ara something. Arabian Prince. Arabian, Arabian Prince. Prince. That's who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Arabian Prince. I was there, but I wasn't there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Teddy, Teddy. Teddy is obviously Dr. Dre. <laughs> oh, Aaron, Aaron, is, Aaron, Aaron is the DLC. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, when when okay, so here is it. Did, when did you meet Aaron? Was it after you know? Did you know him before Timmy? I, I met Aaron. I met Aaron right right when they when he got in the group. Um, I was out. I was out. Like I was told you before, I was out dancing, doing what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw Timmy and Teddy in, in in this club, and they had Aaron with him. You know what I mean? And you know he was real cool. We hung out. We hung out for the whole night. We had a ball. We had a ball. Wow. And but vocally, he was a lot different than you because you know he was that's the complete yeah. opposite. Like it's literally, I'm telling you right now, the whole world would be different if Aaron and Teddy didn't didn't come together. If the guy out, if I was singing on the guy album, it'd be a totally different um 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 legends in, as far as in the nineties. You know what I mean? If it would have been a hit, you know what I mean? Because Aaron is the total opposite of me. Aaron, you know, Aaron had a very adult voice. You know, a very adult voice as a young kid. You know, adult, very adult. You know what I mean? Where we all had, you know, like more like Ralph Tresvan, Elder Barge type of thing. You know, going on. So would you would so would you consider yourself back then when you were singing those records? You would like the singer uh, Brian Loren. Were you guys like that? Brian Loren, who's that? He was a guy. He was a Brian, producer. Brian Loren. Yeah, Brian Loren. He had a song called Lollipop Love and some other records. He had like a medium, medium to like tenor voice or whatever. And at that yeah, time, when that music was out. I heard that song before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's I what I figured. Yeah. Okay, okay. More like the barge, Michael Jackson. If I, if you know, 
the barge, Michael Jackson, Ralph Tresvant. That's what we've been doing mostly. Okay. Yeah. But you know what is interesting that you're saying that? Because when I interviewed Hatestown, so she, Zam said he sounded the same way. He was chasing the, the Michael Jackson, Ralph voice. But when the whole Jodeci and R. Kelly came out, they realized that Dino's voice suited that. So he, and he was like, look, man, that's, that's vocal that you have isn't going to carry us. So that's when Dino became the lead singer of H-Town. So it was interesting that, he, yeah, but it, it was when you catch it. So you said that you wanted to stay in that lane because yeah. it was successful. So you, you can't, you can't argue with what New Edition were doing and, and the Mackle and, and those. It's, it's understandable to be in, in that. Girls, but could you have changed man. though? Could yeah, but, 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 dur but during that girls, time. The girls always like respond to you singing so hot. During that time, <laughs> that was the hot record. It was like the tenor falsetto. That that was the style. Uh, yeah. That was the style. That had replaced everything that come before that. And then, like you said, when Aaron came, all of a sudden that church vocal on the young side yeah. that came back. That was the style. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, my thing, my my thing was always that most guys sing in a chest voice. And who hey, you know what I mean? Most guys sing like that. So the guy, the, the the few guys that that sing really high, like Elder Barge or Michael Jackson, to me those guys were more different. That's why I was all, always more attracted to that style of singing. You know what I mean? Because it's more to me, it's more unique for a man to be able to hit what a girl can hit. <laughs> <laughs> Children, number eight. What's your number eight? Go my number eight is Peace of My Love. Whoa! Wow. Goodness. Okay. Yeah, my number eight is Peace of My Love. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, um, Stevie, <laughs> you want to make your Oh, be before I reveal that, a couple of questions, Clarell. We did an interview last night with a guy over in the West Coast, artist producer called D. Levance. I don't know if you've heard of him. No. 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 Well, he was around in the eighties as a teenager, and he he learned how to mix, produce, master. He had a, he had an album out in 1990 and he did a lot of remix work with Louis Silas Jr. But he told us he got a call in the eighties to go over to New York to be part of your group kids at work. He said he'd never met Teddy. He said, but he actually at the time said he got a call to be in this group called kids at work. And he got a call from Gene Griffin. But he said as well in the interview that Gene spoke so fast that he didn't know what to make of him. And it never really, never really transpired. I don't know if you know any kids at work. Yes, that's what he said. What did, does he know what year this was? Yeah, you're talking early 80s. Well, maybe I, you, I know mean, what, for... you know what it could have been? You know what it could have been? Because Gene, kids at work, the name of kids at work, Gene came from Gene. So maybe Gene had a, a kids at work a, a idea to do a group called Kids at Work before he met us. Right. That was his, that yeah, was his name. It might have been that actually. Mm. I mean, I know I met. Yeah, few people in the industry with his name was getting around a bit as a musician and a singer, and if they, you know, a few people like giving him calls to to sign, and I think that's probably where it came from. You know, probably. Well, and tell me the name again. He's called D Levance. D Levance. Oh, D Levance. Uh, Levance. Levance. He looks like this. He looks like I'll that. Look, okay, I will definitely yeah. look, look into that. That could be true yeah. though, because you know, like I said, the name, the name. When we got to the record company, they had the name for us. We didn't come with the name Kids at Work. Yeah. Also, I mean, when it is yeah. a story for you, I went over in in this. I went over to the states for the first time in 1996. I say this every week on this podcast with some friends who had a. They had a record label over in the UK, an R&B label, and they were looking to get get work over in the States, like remix and production work. And we travelled all over the place, but we ended up stopping in a town called Savannah. We stopped off at a cafe, and in this cafe, there was this bandstand inside it where groups played. And all around it was boxes full of vinyl that they were selling. So I'm looking through all these boxes, and I pulls this album, I pulls ah! Kids at Work album out. Right, I just I couldn't believe it. I thought I just, but the plot thickens. It doesn't stop there. Do you know someone called Angela? Angela? Yeah, because if you turn when I turn the flip over, right? Can you see us? It's signed by all three of you. Uh huh. 
Eddie signed it. You've signed it. And it says to Angela, with love oh, from Clarell. Oh, really? Maybe it was just somebody, a fan we met in passing. I don't know. But, yeah, imagine pulling out a signed copy of the Kids at Work album. That's crazy. <laughs> I, my, I just could not believe it. It was like That's I was crazy. destined. It was like I was destined to travel 6,000 miles <laughs> to find this album and get a signed copy of it. But, yeah, your signature's on there, you know. I don't wow, know how that would be on there. <laughs> I'll sell it for like Is there any way you guys can send me a picture of that? Can you send me a picture yeah, of the signatures? Yeah, I will. I will. I'll, I'll DM you on IG and send you the pictures because I did take it. Yeah, I would love to see that. That's crazy. That's like, <laughs> I love to see stuff like that's like a moment in time that I don't even remember. <laughs> I just couldn't. But maybe it was a gig that you did, and she turned up with a vinyl, and you signed a few. Do you remember signing copies of that album? I mean, I remember doing it, stuff like that all the time. But right. <laughs> where, where's the signed copy? <laughs> I tell you, when you oh, fly right, high, right. you think you're gonna be a big star, boy. You take everything for granted. Take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I've signed. I've anyway. signed money for people. I've signed. <laughs> I've wow. signed. I've signed body parts for people. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Beautiful people, as I say, female people. I, I, I'm pretty sure they don't still have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stevie, what's your number eight? <laughs> uh, number eight is is a track that would have been at number ten when I was eighteen, but over the years, this has grown on me. I think this is a more mature track. The song resonates a bit more, and I, I like the guitar groove, but my business could, it's at number eight. It could be further up now because I, I do listen to it a lot now. Like I say, it's really, over the years, it's really it's really caught up on me. And it, I think mm. it has stood the test of the time. That's my opinion, though. But okay. you know what? I, I see where you're going with it because the lyrical content, because mm -hmm. a lot of the songs, other records, they're, they're groove-oriented. They're just up-tempo up yes. records. They're, you know, it's, they're strong hooks. and But when you look at that, my business is a lyrical content. That exists there so i see why you why you feel that way it's got a good yeah. melody like you say there's no yeah the drums down don't, don't sound outdated you know it's just it's a solid track that just it stays there you know so mm. number eight so i'm i've surprised myself with that because it would have been number 10 back then yeah so my number I rumors uh, say so what remember rumors yes 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 yeah, yeah. yes yes that song yes. was supposed to be supposed to be like our rumors Wow. Okay. Yeah. If you had a second Kids at Work song album, that probably would have made on to that would have been on it. Yeah, I would think so. Hmm. That one and uh, and um um. Oh so yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, my my number eight is um, at the time I didn't mind it. I think as of uh, as I've been listening to it more and maybe the stories about it, um, you can call me crazy. Uh, I mean, I'm sure people might be saying that now that I picked it out low. Um, it is interesting how, you know, the cat get, got out the bag that I'll be sure sang the first verse and Timmy sang the second verse. And actually, if you listen to it, you can tell that the, 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 the um, two different voices on it, I think. But they use I'll be sure for the for the chorus. Um, I know the, the contention was always that um, Teddy has said in interviews that, oh, yeah, um, Timmy started recording it and then he left and then um I, i'll be sure finished it off and timmy has clarified and said no we gave the song to al al was halfway through recording it and gene griffin said that song's too hot we're taking it back timmy you finish up the song so that those are the both the both versions but i, I actually as, as i've been listening to it now it it is not as high as it probably was maybe 10 or 30 years ago so number eight for me would be you can call me crazy. Um, I can't tell the difference in that that vocal. I'll be honest, now. I keep listening. I can't, I can't tell. It's I just think it's Timmy singing. You, you, you can. You know, I, I thought it was Timmy singing it all the way through, but it is certain you hear the riffs in the background, and you can hear I'll be sure is the signature. I'm talking about the lead, vocal, the lead you know, that, yeah, the falsetto. The lead foot. I can't tell. I just couldn't tell it. Did. If you listen yeah, to it, knowing that they're two different singing. voices. Yeah, it was similar, but if you listen to it, knowing Al is much higher than Timmy, um, but yeah, that's yeah. But but uh, for yourself, uh, Karel, what would be your least eighth least favorite? I would say round and round. 
Okay. I'll say round and round. Okay. You know, just I mean, like listen, I would have yeah. been a more attracted to the to the more youthful sounding stuff, and to me, that song is the most mature sounding. That boom, yeah. ah, boom, ah, boom, ah, boom, ah, boom. You know what I mean? I like when they swing. Boom, spa, boom, spa, boom, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, that 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 one, that would be that would, like I would say that'd be my eighth, my eighth, number eight. Yeah. Me. I can see, I can see, well, that's probably Gene's hand all over it. Like, yeah, I'm going to make you like the gap man. So, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <it's right. laughs> um, what, what's your number seven? Uh, what, what's your what's uh, seven? <laughs> my number seven is uh, Spin the Night. Okay. So, this was. So, you know, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, this was, no. you know, for most of us, this was our first time hearing Teddy singing on a, on a record and stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying the same thing. It was like, you know, the first time you're hearing Teddy. Again, the video was really in heavy rotation at the time. And uh, the drum beats. And then I remember the remix. Because what Teddy did was um, he sampled the, the, the breathing from Kraftwerk's, I think it was Numbers, on the remix. Which was really super dope. But yeah, heavy, heavy remix. Yeah. Heavy remix. You remember the oh, remix, Steve? Yeah. It's heavy, heavy. I mean, you know, them drums are almost like rock drums on the album when I listen to it now. Boom. But right at the beginning when they come in, it's like it's like rock I'm listening to, but it's a heavy track, heavy swing track. Oh well, I take that back. What it was was the numbers came from uh you found another guy. That was the boy George. That's right. what it was. You found another guy. That's where the number sample, the craft work sample was at. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first time I heard Teddy sing. I remember the video, man. I, when I first saw Great it, Great. I remember I was I was watching it when my girlfriend was going to work, and then she came home from work eight hours later, and I was still watching <laughs> the video, man. I was like, <laughs> that's how much of a fan I was. Yeah. A, a, a quick question that came from Derek: Do you did you know Diesel Daryl uh, Adams from the Basic Black? Did I know him? Yeah. Yeah. Diesel. So he was the lead singer of Basic Black. I'm sure I've met him in person in passing, but I didn't. We didn't really know each other. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm. And I, honestly, if I, I'm gonna be honest with you, man, <laughs> it's possible that we knew each other very, very well. <laughs> My mindset in in the '80s and the '90s was, I want to sing. I want to sing. I want to sing. I got to perform. I got to write the song. I, 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 I mean, I, everybody else was a was an afterthought, and I, mm -hmm. I feel I feel bad because a lot of people come up to me. Yo, what's up, Corral? How you been, man? And blah blah this and da 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 da. I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> like, you know who I ran into? You know who I, I ran into recently? Who I actually do remember? Um, you know Peter Guns. You guys heard of Peter oh, Guns? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, I, yeah. Of course, I do remember him because he was friends of ours. But he, all the stories he tells me about myself and what his experiences with with me in those days, I don't remember none of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, he told me. I, he told me I got. A, I went to his rehearsal. I went to his rehearsal. I, I got on the piano. I started playing. I want you back, and I was singing. I want you back. I don't remember. I just don't remember. You know what I mean? The only thing I remember is studio, 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 stage, stage, stage. You know, it's amazing that I'm the one that didn't really, you know, go to the forefront. That's all I cared about. It's crazy. Wow. It, question, what was it like hearing Teddy singing for the first time? Because you've known him since a kid. So now he's singing lead on Spend the Night. I was happy for him because that's what he always, deep down inside, that's, deep, he, I don't think he'll, he'll admit it. But deep down inside, that's what he, well, he always wanted to do. He always wanted to sing a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, he stayed in his lane for the most part. He didn't do it. But I was, when Teddy started actually singing, because you got to realize I had already hear, heard him sing from from um, 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 Don't Take My Mind on the Trip. Remember, Don't Take My Mind on the Trip was a, was a, was on a demo that a kids that worked demo before a guy even came out, before a guy, wow. before we, we even met Aaron. You know what I mean? So I already, I already knew he was capable. Because one thing about Teddy, he has, you know, he has great pitch. Teddy don't go off key. That's why he can blow harmonies with anybody. You know what I mean? Because he's a, he's a musician. You know what I mean? He just didn't know how to place his voice in a place in a lead singer's place. He he learned he learned that from from around the No Diggity days. That's when he really learned how to do that. You know so I mean? when he was singing that version of that record back then, 
was he uh, did he have that baritone voice back then too yeah i mean he's saying he basically said because he had he like speak, a the way he spoke mm -hmm. you know what i mean he you know he just, okay he you know he just stayed in his comfort zone and he did what he did teddy could teddy could, is capable of doing a lot more than he than, than even he knows vocally but it's you know he don't care <laughs> Teddy's a <laughs> he's a musician at heart. He's a producer at heart. That's his that's his first love. His first love is production. Like he's literally, mm -hmm. like, I can say now with 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 after watching him for the last couple of months, oh he he stands and he just stays in front of the computer and listens to music and does music, like he's still fifteen years old. That's all he does all day long, all night long. That's all he does. We didn't hang out. We didn't go no. We were supposed to go bowling. We were supposed to do all this <laughs> bowling. Stuff. I know he loves bowling. We didn't do nothing. I tried to get him to go running with me, to go jogging with me. He was like, yeah, okay. Music. <laughs> all he care about is music. That's why he's, he's, success, he's successful. That's all he does. Right. You know what I mean? I finally got him to, like, I got him for a second, just for a second. I said, oh, Tay, can you, can you call Timmy? Can you FaceTime? FaceTime Timmy, me and you, me, you and Timmy haven't been in the same space since the eighties. We haven't seen each other since the eighties. FaceTime, I got him to FaceTime him. It was, it was a beautiful experience. I almost cried. Timmy I, Gatlin. I, I, I hid it from them. I was like, mm, don't fight these tears. And then wow. I got him to call Bobby Brown. I got him to call about Bobby Brown, but Bobby Brown was, was performing at the time. So his wife picked up the phone. Okay. So, you know, I was, I still haven't, haven't reconnected with Bobby Brown yet. But what yeah. about with Timmy? So well, this is recently. So this is after yeah. the whole. Yeah, this is like a, a about a month about a month and a half ago when I first when I first about two months ago when I first got to Dallas, the first day I got t Teddy to call Timmy. It, it was it was just like it was just like regular, you know. We was laughing and joking, and you know, Timmy making fun of you know Teddy Teddy having to having you know gray hair in his beard. I'm sure we all got gray hair. <laughs> I just like to die of mine. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean? It's just like it's just no time. It's like it, it, it was like as if no time has passed. You know. Do you wonderful. think that could ever come back, though? Kids at work. I mean, do you think the three of you could just just you know just do something? Honestly, I mean, you know why I don't think it'll happen because I don't think Timmy's I don't think Timmy's interested in that. You know what I mean? I don't think so, Teddy. Because Teddy is still Teddy is still he still tours. He still produces. He still does music. I still produce. I still sing. I still do shows. If T I know Timmy still produces and writes, I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard anything about Timmy being interested in anything to do with artistry. He was. Cons he did consider when I I spoke to him twice. Uh, you know, if he had been given a call to go on the 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 uh, um, the legacy tour with Guy. Oh yeah. I saw so that. He, I wish I wish I wish he would have. Yeah, he'll he'll do that because I mean economically, <laughs> that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. But it could be something to consider. It could be something the three of you can, can can consider though. Just the three of you just saying, let's just you know you know like the five heartbeats or or, or something. Just <laughs> you know just re-recording one of the old tracks and just shooting a video and 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 just for nostalgia stuff like that. Just you yeah. know it's so if yeah, we'd okay. have had one hit record one real legit hit record then then it would have been something that would have been that would have made sense but because there was no hit record no real hit record you know it was just hit records in regions that it just it just it wouldn't make sense i would do it of course but you know they wouldn't yeah. do it. <laughs> well, it we just need one we just need a final member of kids at work to be on on our on the show I've interviewed you, Timmy. <laughs> it's just Teddy, who's the, the final piece of the of the jigsaw, to see if you guys can like, hey, just float around him. <laughs> I did talk to Teddy. I did talk to Teddy about doing your show. I did talk to him about doing your show. He's he's working on a he's working on a a, a documentary and a movie or something like that about his life, and that's why he didn't want to do it. He's. I think he'll do it after 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 that situation is is done. But I tried to I tried to get Teddy to do to do um to do um to do your show because I'm like yo you really need to do this guy's show man he's a really really a big admirer of you like really big admirer of you and he he said yeah I I know about that show at least he, at least he knows about it <laughs> he said yeah I know about that show but I he said I can't do it now because I'm working I'm working on a documentary about my life that's that's that was that, those were his exact words 
Yeah, so and, I, and I remember you told me it would right afterwards, and, and so I would definitely appreciate that. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah. you know what? You know, my answer to that would be if he came on and had a more up to date connection with the listeners and the fans of halftime chat and was just more amenable, his documentary would be far bigger. Yeah, because I believe so. You don't have to come on here and tell us everything, but the fact yeah. that he's on here relating to his fans and people can see him. He can yeah. plug, he can plug things he's doing, and it'd be far, far bigger. But yeah, um, who am I? He does. He, <laughs> I know. He, I know for a fact he he watches the show because he's because I we, think we, that we, I think that this show. We, we, I honestly think that this show is what week. made me and him is yeah. was, is what got me and him to 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 reconnect physically. You know what I mean? Like we spoke, wow. we speak, we've spoken in passing. We've spoken in mm. passing through the years, you know what I mean? Like, or, or I've contacted, contacted, we've spoken to each other on, on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. We follow each other. But th it was this interview that I've done with you, I believe, that made him that made him actually reach out. You know wow. what I mean? That's, that's, I don't weird, even know weird. if it's true. I believe it's true, though. Life, life, <laughs> we're at all at an age now. Life is so short. We don't know if we're going to be here next week or not. Like you say, as men, it's what I'd say to Teddy, that documentary that you're you want to come out may never come out. That's what I'm saying. You you've got an opportunity here to come on, connect with your fans whenever you want, talk about whatever you want. You don't have to tell us everything, but whatever you're doing would be far far bigger. There's another name in this kids at work story that hasn't been mentioned, and again, I like to you know try and find out people's histories who were part of this new Jack thing. Um, a guy called Orville Gilchrist. Um, do you know? Yeah. I found this very, very rare album from '94. It's called The Original Chris Brown. It's like RB New Jack's incredibly rare, but the whole album's produced by Orville Gilchrist. Now, when I checked the, the kids at work vinyl, his name's on it as well. Can you tell me something about Mr. Gilchrist? Because I don't know anything about him. Well, he was the, he was the one that um produced the Kids at Work album. Um, he was in a R. I know he was in an R and B group. I can't remember the name of the group that he was in. They were signed to Gene as well. They were signed to the Sounds of New York as well. He was a good producer. That's the only thing I could say. He put the whole thing together. He delegated and managed. Those days, production was a was different than it is now. Production was you had to basically manage like twenty different people. You coordinating the whole situation. Yeah, so and everything was played live in those days. So he had to delegate and 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 lead all those situations. In those days, it was, you know, it's like before we went in the studio to do to do the album, we had to go into rehearsal studio to practice the album. <laughs> they didn't play in those days. That's why everybody was on was on point. You know what I mean? And he 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 was in charge of all of that. All of that. He made sure the harmonies were right, he made sure the melodies were right, you know, he made his changes. Him and him and Timmy and Teddy, um, him and Timmy and Teddy didn't didn't always agree because <laughs> you got to realize Timmy and Teddy were more produce producer oriented. They were producers before it was before it was it was it was um, famous to be a producer as a kid. You know what I mean? Teddy, you know, was already a producer, but because so because they were the writers and the producers of all the music, and if you know if all we wanted to change something, you know, they would disagree. It could be just a little chord here and there, or whatever it, it could be. You know what I mean? The, the, the I know the I remember the biggest the biggest contention was um the biggest little fight was in was with a song called All in All. You know what I mean? T Timmy had it a, a different way, and 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 um Orville changed it to another way. But other than that, you know, it was all good. And plus, you know, it was all also Orville's decision for Timmy not to sing um half of She's My Baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, and I think yeah. That's not no, gonna be good. Yeah, is he still right. alive, this guy? Is he still around? Huh? Is uh -huh. Orville, is he still alive? Is, is he still Yeah, yeah, he's still alive. I spoke to him, I want to say maybe six, seven years ago. I call I gotta call him back too. Um, yeah, I spoke to him about six, maybe six, seven years ago. I know he's married and he's in the south somewhere. I forget exactly where he's at. He's in the south. I got I actually have his phone number. I need to call him. But I think that's but, the thing yeah. about that album is the fact that. Timmy and Teddy, who were writers and producers, if they were allowed to do it the way, not just produce it, but mix it, because Timmy said he was upset the fact that they could have done the album better than it finally came out. 
Yeah, it would have been better. Yeah. Wow. It would have been better. The reason why I say it would have been better because all the dem all the demos and all the all the you know how when a when a band would lay down music before they mix it, all the music all the all the songs before they mixed it were better. Mm. That, that 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 album would have been even better to me. To me. Yeah. Stevie, we're at number seven. Um probably the most heart rendering track on the album. You got to hear Tammy Lucas on this. Um it got remixed and sampled years later on, on a Black Street track. Um, it pains me to only be at number seven. It's a, it's a great track. It's Goodbye, My Love. Brilliant, Quiet Storm, Slow Jam. Brilliant record, you know? Wow. Brilliant record. Wow, at number seven. My, my number seven is um, Spend a Night. Um, I mean, I think when you think of it, it, it is one of the more New Jack tracks on the album. You know, very different from Groomy. It was like the, the, the sort of the, almost like the, well, I won't say the blueprint for New Jack because he's already done, um, I wanna and prerogative and just got paid. But this felt like it was in that vein. Um, but yeah, that made my number seven. Uh, what about yourself, Corel? What, what just? And Matt gives me a yellow card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's Ooh. what you call a red card, and he's just, you know, <laughs> I would say. say? Uh... Peace of my love, and not not that I like it. I love peace of my love, but you know, I, I, when you listen to the guy album, to me, you're going to be more attracted to the up temples more so than than the, than the ballads. You know what I mean? Because if you notice, even the ballad is funky, like boom, at boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? It's like you know how some ballads are really pretty and melodic. That mm. ballad is more funky. You know what I mean? So if you're going, if it's because it's funky, I'd rather listen to the up temple funky. You know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. If you, could, if, you that, if you spread that song up, it would be a, it would be a nice up tempo. Boom, 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 boom. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's funky. <laughs> what was it like? Because you, when I spoke to Timmy and I said it always sounded as if Aaron was singing for in a cupboard, and he says, "Well, because we recorded that in Teddy's bathroom, yeah, the bathroom and yeah. and then we just took the mix." And then you know it wasn't. It was pretty much what we recorded in the bathroom is what's on the album. So I'm like, yeah, because it always sounded like the echo. It didn't really sound like he was, was in a studio singing and stuff. But, but, but did you listen to that and think, oh, I could? What, what would you have done differently on that track if you sang the ballad? How would it, it would have been more like sensitivity or or? If I would have sang you, it differently, I mean, yeah, if you sang it for instead of Aaron, how would you? How would you? Would you <laughs> okay, that's you falling off. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! I don't know. That's, oh. <laughs> I've never thought about that. Baby, you can have all of me. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know how I would have sing that. You can have a piece of my love. I don't know. I don't know. It's a very alpha male song. Very alpha male song. Aaron is a, is a, is a, is the ultimate singer. Yeah. Wow. The ultimate singer. I I take my hands off to him. He's he's a bad boy. I don't <laughs> I, I don't think I would have done it, done it done it better. That's for sure. I just would have done it differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo. But yeah. But yeah. It. But then again, you know, it's the lyrics. It's the it's the music. And then we 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 vibe with whoever's sing with with with, with the singing because Keith. Keith's first album was not based on the singing; it was based on the music and the, and how it all he delivered it. But it, so you could see great music. Um, it probably would have, you know, who knows? Keith Sweat's um, a very consistent artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not knocking Keith. Yeah, yeah. Guy, I know he Woo! watches as well. <laughs> Sheldon, and he definitely watched when when Timmy was talking about writing. I wanna, uh, no, um, make you sweat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah he didn't yeah. like I'll, he I'll didn't like the fact that, that Timmy said. Yeah, were you around when he was when Timmy was? I was around when he was going back and forth to the to the to the studio with him, but I wasn't in the studio with him with, with Timmy. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, no, yeah. I think Timmy was saying that Keith he did Keith didn't like when Timmy says yeah Keith kept begging me to come write the song and then so because he had no old ballads on the album, so somebody Keith was watching that and. Uh, 
he 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 caught he, he, I was supposed to set up an interview, um, but yeah, it just didn't 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 happen. Uh, Sheldon's number <laughs> Timmy six. And, <laughs> Timmy and Keith Sweat got the they got the most competitive competitive camar camaraderie I've ever been around. Boy, them two are so competitive <laughs> with each other. They, I remember I remember one time, man. I'm looking. I'm sitting in between them. They, they was both debating on what what was the record of the year. Um, Groove me or 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 I wanna. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, goodness. Yeah. And Timmy Timmy has said that he he was uh, very you know, he's very headstrong and you know uh, and and that was just him, you know, always ready to fight, you know, well not physically fight, but you know, never stand stand his ground no, and he stuff. He was ready so. to physically fight. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready. Timmy was ready to physically fight. <laughs> Timmy, uh, Timmy talk a lot, but Timmy will fight you. <laughs> they have to fight you. Who, who did you know first, Timmy or Teddy? Timmy. But I met him like the same, within the same probably month of each other. Okay. Yeah, Timmy, yeah. Timmy introduced me to Teddy. Okay. Wow. Sheldon, number six. Number six for me is I like it. It's it's odd because everyone loves this record. You would have thought if God never ever put out a record and I like was the only record <laughs> they put out, they really would have loved that. I mean, that I, I don't know if I think it's just people love it because it's more it's got lyrics you can sing along to it. Like a lot of the records, you know, groove me and don't clap, just dance, they're hook driven. But everybody seems to love that record, man. They love it, you know. They and sometimes they when they talk about like '90s music, they sometimes they categorize it as like a '90s record because it, you know it's in that it's in that vibe, yeah. man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I never understood how it um, it. I don't know what what the trend was. Maybe a dance or something. It just blew up and stuff. And Damien said that one of the issues that guy had when he when that trickle track had its um viral moment during the pandemic is that they didn't capitalize on it so he he wanted himself Ted and Aaron to shoot a video of them singing it to really then say oh guys you know but it was because there was never really a video for it so he wanted he wanted to try and get them to capitalize on it but you you know I think Aaron was in um hibernation um and just didn't get involved but he they could have done something with that um to really boost up the, themselves okay and and that's the groups that's the groups at that time when that song came out off the album that's their highest charting record on that album and they didn't yep. do a video i know they they used the um soul train one but yeah i, I yeah okay i never understood See, why we they didn't do a video we haven't told clarell yet but on this when we do this show every week these top 10 rundowns we have a if we don't agree with certain decisions or we think it's a bit we give each other yellow cards. So two yellow cards means you're off. You're off the show. A red card is like you're gone. <laughs> and Mr. New Park gives Sheldon a red card straight away for I like. I like being at number six. <laughs> the key thing what yeah, Sheldon I, said I, there is everybody say, I like. With I like. You know, I mean that, that that's a beloved record. You know, I just have, cards, I have Sheldon. other favorite records. I have other I have other favorite records, man. You know, but again, it's in the middle. It's in the middle. You know. So what about you, Stevie? You're number uh, six. Uh, Clarell, did you did you know Zan? And have you any stories about Zan Aquart? Who's that? Zan, Zan Z A N. Oh, yes, Zan the man. Yeah. Him? Do you oh, have any stories man. about him? Oh, I'm try I've been trying to get in touch with him. I can't. Oh, find please, him. please. We need his story. We need his story. I can't get in touch with him. I found his Facebook. I can't. He don't. He doesn't answer it. Damn. I found. I, I found his brother's Facebook. He doesn't answer it. I don't know what's going on. I can't find him. He is. That guy is amazingly talented. Amazing. Wow. I've seen a video. He did a video. He did a video maybe 10 years ago or something, some kind of song he was doing when he's playing guitar and everything. So he's still I think doing I've it. Seen that. Yeah, I think I've seen I that. Is he going to blues? Is he I going to blues? I was hoping that you well. would tell me you, you knew him. Oh, 
what do you have you any stories about him back then? What he was up to, what he was doing? I mean, he, you know, um, I don't know if you noticed, but Zan is the one who wrote, who, who wrote, um, um, uh, what's the song by today? Um, why, why are you getting funky, funky on me? Why are you get funky on me on me? Why are you get funky on me? Yeah, yeah, that was supposed to have been a kids at work record. Wow, you know what I mean? Wow, yeah, it was totally, yeah. it was totally different though. It was totally different. Would've but been. we, you know, like we only, we only, we only, we only, we only, it was just, it was just a hook that we had. You know what I mean? It was, it was a totally different song though, but it, you know, but that's where they got it from. I mean, Aaron, I mean, um, Zan, one thing I love, this is what I love about Zan. Zan, Zan, Zan had a, like, if, if you notice, Zan had, me and Zan had a similar, similar vibe, similar look to each other. And Zan and his brother were signed to Kids at Work, I mean, to, um, to Gene first. And when we came, when we came, you know, Gene and the, the rest, rest of the company just basically put everybody else on hold and was dealing with only with only us. Yeah. And Zan, Zan never felt any kind of jealousy or animosity or any kind of negative vibe. He was always encouraging. I was, I would go out if I if I'm if I'm out and about, I, I run to Zan. He's like, "Yo, this man right here, he got a number one record coming out." And he was talking about he was talking about um. He really loved She's My Baby. That was like his favorite song on the whole album. Number positive vibes from this guy. That's why, to this day, I can't, I wish I could find this guy. He Do had you remember his album? Because he signed huh? to Warner Brothers. Do you remember his album huh? of Warner Brothers? Sans album yeah, I remember Warner, he Brothers. Warner Brothers. I remember. That's the last time you, I saw him when he, when he had got, right before he got that deal. Did you ever listen to that album at all? Can you no, even I remember didn't that? Album? I wasn't around when he did the album. And I don't, I don't, I, you know, I. Like he had this song called Miss and Make that was so amazing. He he was an amazing writer. Like I wish I could find him. He had a song, it was like, said is Miss and Make, a give and take. Always love it, the heart wow. you break. I mean, fly. Just fly wow. song. Fly song. I wish I can't find him. I need to find him. Yeah, I, I was I mean, told somebody told me he's quite reclusive now. He's quite reclusive. So yeah, I mean, I'll give you his email address because um, um, Spec from Basic Black, he he reached out to me because he's he's and he, he he um he says yeah he gave me his email address but he says yeah he's he's trying to shun the um yeah he's trying to keep out of the um the limelight and the business and stuff um but I and I reached that out means, to him. This was about this was this was about a year ago, and um, he he never responded. So I just didn't really follow it up. But you may I'll pass you his email address, so maybe he will respond to you and stuff. Def, um, definitely, but yeah, definitely, definitely giving his email address. And if I get in touch with him, I'll get him to do a show. I'll get him to do the show. It's yeah. not a case of I know you you know if he wants to stay out the the business, fair enough. But he needs he just needs to. For historical reasons, just tell his story so it's always on here then. For yeah, fans, man. you know, yeah. let's remember yeah. him. You know, let's remember the guy and give him his flowers because he, he deserves them, you know. Yeah, he's very yeah. talented. Very talented. He could sing his ass off, good guitar player, everything. He, he could really write. He's extremely, I thought he was going to be real big. Like, real big. I don't, I don't understand it, but it is what it is. Hmm. Stevie, number six. <laughs> um, huh? Number six. I oh, number six me. Um, no, 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 uh, not yet. Not yet, Corel is Stevie. Oh, then myself. Oh, then. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Sorry, I, I was going to say, guy made three classic ballads for me. Obviously, Let's Chill was one of them. Goodbye, my love. It's, it's a classic for me. And the third one, as we've mentioned before, well, you just mentioned it before, Peace of My Love, but. It's a number six, but like you say, you're we listen to that guy album. We didn't listen to it for the ballads, we listened to it for the twin tracks. But there's two great ballads on there, you can't ignore them. I still play them to death now. So, number six could have been easily higher, but the, the, the tracks that are in front of it are just as big. So, that's it. That's <laughs> it for me. Number six, okay. Um, my number six is um, Teddy's Jam. Wow! Yeah, well, that's the first yellow card, Namdi. It, it, it used to be higher. It used to be higher. Then I think I, I prefer Teddy's Jam to, to to it. But I think once I've listened to the album a lot more, and I think I'm heavily influenced by some of these because Timmy went through every song on the album and and told. 
the stories about writing it and, and how it came about. And I think that influenced a lot of how I, when I listened to the song, how what re remembering that. Um, but yeah, Teddy's Jam it will be at number six. I mean, it's you know, as I said, it's that's a high number, but uh, it's my number six. What about yourself, Claire? What's uh, I would say, clap your hands, clap your hands, don't was it clap oh, your hands? Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't dance. clap, just dance, don't, don't clap your hands, yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, clap, just dance, don't that's like out of, out of all the up temples, that's that's probably listen to that the least out of okay. all the up temples. And, and that's one of the big things about what we're saying is it's pretty much, you know, it's always you know, very personal, very subjective and stuff like that. It's not saying it's not a great song. It's just for oh, each yeah. and every one of us. Yeah. Um, oh, no. There's no bad songs on that album. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that, that's, one of the, that's one of the songs I heard early on, too. That, okay. That, that's a demo. Yeah. So when you're saying hearing it as a demo, is it, is it that they've... They're recording in the house, and, and you listen to it before they go in the studio, or what was? You know what? His the demos for some reason the demos on the guy album are exactly like the records. You know what I mean? They're they're exactly the same. I guess because of technology, mm -hmm. because I guess Teddy Teddy used to actually bring his his equipment in the studio. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So was there any the track left off recorded? Do you think? Did you hear any other tracks that may have been left off this album? I've, you know, I've heard, I've heard them sing, I've heard them record songs that that didn't make the album, but I don't recall them. Like I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember being there one day when they was recording a song, and you know they had some girls over and everything, <laughs> and whatever that song was, I never heard again. That's but I, you know, what I mean, or it was another song that I remember was a song that Timmy had sang, that Timmy had sang. Um, I don't I don't remember it though, but I remember he sang the song. I was there at the of the whole creation of it, and this is actually when they had, they had kicked Aaron out the group for 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 a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? So Timmy had to assume the the, the, the place of, of the lead singer, and Timmy did a song. Timmy and Teddy did a song, and it didn't make the album. You know, so I'm sure it was a lot of songs that didn't make the album. What about a cover version? Were you, were they singing any cover? Did they? Consider putting a like a cover version on there, like a lot a lot of groups do. A cover? I don't. I don't. I don't. Think they did. I, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. I don't recall any covers. So you know what you just said because at that time that Aaron was out to the group for a couple of weeks was that the time when you had the opportunity to come back to to be in group? Like you told me that Gene and Teddy told you <laughs> gave an opportunity. What Another happened with that? Dumb decision. <laughs> <laughs> Another dumb decision by yours truly. Let me tell you something, man. Anytime you see somebody who was a singer and didn't make it to the top, it's only because of their decisions. It's decisions, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Teddy asked me personally to be back. I'm, you know, to be back in the group, and I, I told him, "No, are you out of your mind? Are you stupid?" <laughs> and my mom said, "No, I don't want to be in the group." You know what I mean? Like, what the the dumb it's probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. That's the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> but everything happens for a reason, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is yeah, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Did did um did, what was your excuse? Did you say you, you want to go My solo? Excuse, you know what it was? You know what had happened? It's I'm telling you, it's always about a person's individual success and what they believe can happen. Gene had already told me that he was going to work with me as a as a solo artist. So, so I'm I'm thinking, okay, do I do I work with Timmy? Because you got to realize this this is Teddy before he, before the stardom, Timmy and Teddy before the names. You know what I mean? So, so I'm like, do I want to go back to all those debates that we had and all those snapping sessions that we had? You know what I mean? Or do I want to be able to do what I want to do on my own under the same management? And I chose to do that, and we, which of course was a big mistake because he never even got to work with me. You know what I mean? So yeah. That's all. Well, uh, then again, if if you'd have joined the group and the album had come out, by all accounts, you wouldn't have made any money anyway because nobody, none of the group seemed to make any money out of it. Gene took the money, so you'd have, well, spit, you'd have been out though. of pocket anyway. No, I yeah, from I, Timmy. Made, I don't, you know, I, it happened the way it was supposed to happen. You know, looking back on my life, I can say, I can say with all honesty, it was like, I still think that I'm, I'm going to get a hit record one day, but it wasn't meant for me to get a hit, a hit record then. It was not meant for me. I, like I literally believe that 
I put more I put more to blame on kids at work not make not becoming a, a success than anything else that happened because it just wasn't meant for me to be a success back, back then. Mm-hmm. It was not meant to like I don't know if I told you this, Namdi. Um, Timmy had this, back in the in the early '80s. Timmy had this girlfriend, right? <laughs> this is a weird story, but this is, I don't know if I told you this story. Timmy had this girlfriend who's who met who who her mother came by and she met me, Timmy and Teddy, right? You know what she said? This this was this her mother said. Her mother said, "You guys are not going to stay together." Wow. Teddy is going to be very successful. What? He said, "Timmy." is going to be successful for a time and fade away. And he said, Clarell, you're going to make it, but it's going to take a long time. That's what she said to me. Was she a huh? Now, this is before she even heard you all sing. Yes. Wow. And she, this, was lady was like, this, lady, this, lady, this lady was a prophet because other, uh, other things she told me that actually came to fruition. So, But how did you take it? How did you guys take I it mean, this crazy when I you heard it? Like, I, figured, I figured I'd be a star at 26. <laughs> I, I didn't think, think it was going to take 100 years, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh. So, you know, I'm, you know it's, a, it's a reason why I can't. Now I see why, even at, you know, at, at, at this stage in my life, I can't stop making music. I can't stop performing. I can't stop doing. I'm, doing, I'm living the same life I was living when I was 25 years old. It's just I can't stop, and now I see why. And now I see why but she I, know, I'm not aging. I'm not aging, so it must be meant for me to do something out here. <laughs> you need to get, Kyle, you, need yeah, to get yeah, yeah. Out. you need to get some songs out, mate. Seriously. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. working on it yeah, saw, again. Believe me. Yeah, I saw your videos, man. Believe me, I'm working. You're doing on all the coaching and things of that. Name. I, have I a, seen your videos. We do a lot of coaching and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's your spirit. You you don't have you don't have that music industry stress. No, no. That's that, that, that they have, that they you know, in terms of that. So no, I'm not bitter. that plays a part in it. That's really good. I'm not bitter. Yeah. I don't give a damn, and I don't blame nobody for my lack of success. It ain't got nothing to do with one thing. Ain't got nothing to do with the other. It's my choice, my decision. I'm gonna, you know. So if I never made you know, it, you, it, it you could nobody falls for mine. Some tracks out. Create your own fan base online. You know. Oh yeah. Start doing I it. You know. You can, listen, you can you can sing. You can write a song. Just need producing. Get you know producers as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, um, You'll hear it. I'm, I'm telling you, I have a whole plan that I'm go- that I'm going to unleash, <laughs> and they're not going to even see me coming. Yeah, they're no, I mean, it's, me it. it's and, and one of the things that I saw, I mean, because you one of probably in the vast minority where you are the only person out there, not just on the music side, but you're really promoting and coaching people on the science. Of performing, yeah, which is a lost art. You talking about in terms of singing, in terms of music, as the beat, as the beat is going on, you stay moving as the beat is going, yeah, the the, the stamina, yeah, and all of that, all those those nuances that were lost with a lot of artists because the, there were no performance venues, yes, so they never learned those skill sets, yes. So yeah, that's really powerful what you're doing. Thank you, man. It's, it's, yeah. The artist development is is is, is non void now. It's about yeah. numbers now. It's a numbers did, did game the, now. The question was, did, did you did you ever get considered for for Black Street back in when Teddy was setting that up? No, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't around Teddy during the beginning of Black Street. We we that's when we lost touch because you know why Teddy okay. I, Teddy I think that's when Teddy left New York. When Teddy left, yeah, he New left. York, mm. we lost we lost. I didn't I didn't see Teddy again until until I until I vocal coached Black Street. <laughs> And when I say oh, vocal coach back Black Street, it really it really was my my boss at the time that vocal coached him. I was his I was his assistant, but I was the one that was left with Black Street because he was so busy. He kept going flying back and forth to New York, and I I was I was the one that stayed in the studio with Teddy and him, and so I ended up in a sense being their vocal coach. You know what I mean? Oh, Junior recording of the Black Street it's album. It's hard to vocal coach people that's your age, huh? Junior recording of the that debut album. No, no, no. D- um. Right after the, right after the, right after, right after, um, right after the biggest hit, right after the, right after the No, the no Dickety album, that's when I oh. came down there to, 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 vocal, to vocal coach them. You know what I mean? Okay. Right after the okay. No Dickety album. 
Yeah. Uh, to, 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 just quickly, um, when that lady said that about the three of you, how did Teddy and Timmy take what she said? I know how you did. Did they? Did you guys talk about it? Did they say what? Uh, no, did... I don't think. I don't. I don't remember even having a discussion about it. You know what I mean? Because you know, it's not something that you know, as kids, it's not something that you want to face. You don't want to face the fact that oh, I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna take a long time to make it, or or Timmy probably didn't want to face the fact that he's gonna fade out or, at, at some point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So when I saw that happen, I was like, oh. you know what I mean? I was like, oh shit, something. Because <laughs> in the early '90s, Timmy was the man, like the man. You know what I mean? And then you know he may, he may still have money and everything, but as far as being known and popular, being popular and all that kind of stuff. He faded out in that way, you know what I mean? So when I saw that happen, I was like, whoa. Then it's about what happens. Then that means your stuff is still to come. So I can see it's, why. It's still it's coming. Like, it's still coming. <laughs> okay. yeah, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> it's still coming. Yeah, yeah we, we, we're here to support you and stuff. And, and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Sheldon, we're number five. So as we. <laughs> we're, I know you guys are excited talking to Corel and getting all the backstory. So as we're. Do not count that. We'll, we'll, we'll jump back into it as well. <laughs> so, Sheldon, number five. Goodbye, love. Um, that's my favorite ballad on the album. Uh, I, I like the the, the lyrical storyline and just you, you know hearing Tammy's vo vocals in the background. You know, you know, very dope record. Very dope record. Okay. So that's my number five. TV. Uh, number five is the only track that had a, a Washington go go feel an inspiration to it you had it at number six namdi i've got it at number five it's teddy's jam number okay. five okay it's okay. you know i suppose it is a jam it's it's a classic it is a classic yeah. so, the album mix anyway i wasn't too keen on the remix i thought it got mm. a bit too a bit too clattery and a bit too but as an album mix so mm. melodic and you know aaron just singing that jam has been it's been sampled a hundred times that mm -hmm. and, you, know, going, Jam. you hear it on so many hip hop records, don't you? Eric Sermon used to love sampling it for starters, free PMD, and you know, this, but yeah, number five, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, my number five is um, Don't Clap, Just Dance. And um, actually, I, you know, I, I, wow. it probably could have been higher for me. Um, that's, above, I, that's above Teddy's Jam. Yeah, I just love the the whole groove. I mean, um, you know, and when Timmy spoke about writing it, he said that him and him and Aaron, because Teddy didn't go to the clubs back in those days, it was him and Aaron in the club, and he used to he looked around and saw, you know, see some a girl just just dance dance standing there just watching and 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 he just thought, you know, well, you know, you know, just you know, why don't you just dance? They don't fold, just don't cl and clap your hands, you know, because there was lots of girls who just want to show off and so he was talking about about that but when i listen to it, it it is just an upbeat track and aaron's voice going you know the, the, the how it flows and stuff like that is really it you know the more i i did enjoy it early on but i think the more i listen to it now i it probably could have been high for me but that's it don't clap just cl uh, don't just dance don't clap your hands yeah wow. corral number five for you hmm so I'm having trouble keeping up with what I what I what I already <laughs> mentioned and what I what I need to mention. No, I, I, think, I think it must be um 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 T Teddy's jam. Only because it's the you know it's the it's the least sung song. It's just not really a song. It's just a a dope groove. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I actually sang um background on on the, on one of the remixes of that song. Yeah. Oh, which of the of which one? Teddy of, Jam. Of Teddy Jam. Yeah, I sing background on one of the remixes. Um, if you hear if you ever hear remixing, you go Teddy, 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 Teddy. <laughs> that's me. Oh yeah, that's you. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, that's the one they play. That's the one they play on Soul Train all the time. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite one. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was a Oh man, that's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did they get you to do that? What happened? What was the story behind that? Were you just sitting around and he says, "Can you?" I was just honestly, I was just hanging out. I was just hanging out in the lobby while while Teddy was in the studio working, and he he was like, "Corral, can you come here a second? 
I, I, he said, yeah, can you sing? Can you sing something for me? And that was, it was that simple. You know what I mean? I just he just gave me the, the notes, the three part harmony, and I just did it, and that was it. It took like ten minutes, five minutes. I don't know. It was real quick, and that was it. And next, like a week or two later, I heard it on the radio. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> <Here you go." laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> 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 it's so funny and then right right after that i had to sing um i was in the studio with with timmy for for his debut album i was i did misdemeanor with with timmy and i thought you know oh you did it foster silver oh yeah, my yeah. god but, okay but they, they they mixed it so low that it didn't really it's just it just seemed like in the studio it was fly but in the with the record it just seemed like background you know what i mean but whatever. But I was doing a Foster Silver thing in there, you know, because I had that high range. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. just, and Mike says that he just threw that. He just threw that gem out like it was nothing. <laughs> you know, the <laughs> fact that you got the Teddy's gem. I mean, before we, uh, you know, before we get to um, uh, number four. So, what was it? What What was your exp feeling when Teddy, um, Timmy's kicked out, and they're just about to blow up? Did you, I mean, as a guy who's known them, you must have felt for him, or what did you? Th what was it for? I was like, let me see. I'm just trying to remember if we had a conversation. I know we had many conversations about that. But I can't remember. I don't know if I recall a conversation then about it. But I, I know I was like, I, I just felt, I felt the same way. I felt, I felt similar to what I, way I felt when Bobby Brown was 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 ousted out a new edition. It was like, no, this is not right. This is not right. Cause see, I know I know Timmy in a in a in a different way than than most of the world. I know Timmy as. The, as the one with the good ideas, the one with the good showmanship, the one who not who came up with most of the dance steps, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I knew, I knew for a fact that the performance aspect of Guy was going to be diminished from what it originally could have been. You know what I mean? And it's sad because you never see there is. I don't think I don't think Timmy, Tim, Timmy, Teddy, and Aaron ever did a show together, ever. Wow, like ever. Jeez. So we have no idea what it would have been, and I just know that wow. Timmy, when it came to, when it comes to being, when it came to, to to putting a show together, as far as showmanship and and how the vibe should be and how the dress should be, that's, that that was Timmy's strong point. You know, what I mean, that's 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 where his strength lies. So I just thought I felt that it would have been better with him. You know, what I mean, that's why I feel to this day when they when they do go out on tour. It should be all four of them. I just somehow mm. think that it would be a, it, he would add something to it yeah. if they if they allowed it. Because I would yeah. never want to see Timmy take Damien's place. Because Damien, you know, you can't deny his contribution to Guy. Of course, you know what I mean. Yeah. But they should all be together. They should all be together. If they did it on Dream Girls, they could do it on Guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even Effie Timmy said he was open to. Huh? If who can come back? If Effie can come back to, to Green Girls, <laughs> and so, so can Timmy come back to guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Timmy, I'm tell you that would be really super dope. Yeah, yeah. and Timmy has said he was open to it, so I think. Um, but you know, you know, hope you know. There's still time. Rolling Stones yeah. torts at 80 years old, so there's still time. I know, <laughs> so, right? Uh, <laughs> Sheldon, yeah. number four. My number four is you can call me crazy. Wow! So that's you know, that, uh, like, like 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 every yeah, like everybody else when the record came out, I always thought it was Timmy, and it was just like then later on, years later, when they started talking about I'll be sure, and I went back, I heard the record, listened to the record, I was like, yep, there he is, you know. But yeah, I love and then the remixes, dope, you know. I love the remix, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know when when guy put the uh. Well, when MC Air Universal put the two CD set that came out like back in 2007, 2008, 20th anniversary of the guy uh, initial release. Yeah, they had the remix on there, man. It was really good. So yeah, that's my that's my number four. Okay. Stevie, 
Um, in a previous podcast, this, you know, when we did early on when we did like our top 10 12 inch remixes. Yeah, yeah. This was my remix. number one. And this would have been my number one back when I was 18, 19. I feel it's like this is a true New Jack Swing gem in terms of in terms of like the tempo, the song, the actual look, the dance in the video. Um, but it's a number four, probably because a few of the tracks have outgrown. The, the only thing I put, the only reason I put it number four, because the drums sound a bit rocky to me now. They're so heavy, but you spend the night number four for me. But I just love this record so much. Mm. It's a true new Jack Swing gem you know as an album mix but the actual 12 inch remix is at number one in my all-time favorite 12 inches which is in a previous okay. podcast okay um before i go to my number four jerry the um i'll be sure was on the first verse and timmy was on the second verse but i think i'll be did the chorus I still can't tell i still can't tell you can, no if you listen to it now you could tell that yeah you can you can um it um timmy's not as high on the track as as i'll um yeah um, my number four is I like, and I think it's grown on me more so than I think early on it wouldn't have been that high up, but I think because of the last four years it's just been wow, it's, just it's been grown good. on you. How can it, yeah, grown it's grown on you, Nandy? Because it went viral and it was just everyone singing, and you listen to it and you just think, okay, this feels so very it wasn't one of your favorites back then. No, 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 not it back then, it hit you back then, no. Back then, spend the night was much was much higher. Um, spend the night was higher. That, that was that was. No, I mean, you know, I like. I mean, I like. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't have been as high as. Um, I didn't. You know, I like would have probably been down my, my seven or so, eight or seven. Wow. And spend the night would have been much higher. But I think as I've gone older and over time, I've prefer, I've just listened to it um, a lot more. And and probably as I said in talking to Timmy about it. Um, and him said he was supposed to sing it because he he did the intro. So he was he started the intro. He and he was supposed to sing it. And then Aaron Aaron came in and sang it. And he's like, yeah, you know what? You go ahead and, and sing lead on that. And he said there was no competition. It was like whoever was best for the song got got it. And as Carell has been saying it, Timmy was seeing the longer division, the better the better meant for everything. Not like, well, I want to sing this. So I'm going to sing it because I wrote it. Um, but yeah, I just I, I think it's it's just grown on me. I think it's just been a, a more upbeat, happy song. So yeah, so that's number four for me. Yeah, I think that's their most enduring record. That's the record, even though it made it's great records. I think that's the one that's kind of like had the like the longest life, shelf life, so to speak. You know, it's like a slight departure from all the groove oriented records or whatever, you know, song oriented. But yeah, then again, that's their that's their biggest. Chart and record, man. Yeah. Number two at the time. Yeah. For yourself, Corel, what 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 was uh what's number four for you then? We're down to the last four. Hey, did I um I'm just trying because I'm, I'm <laughs> I always I gotta yeah, we, sure. we take I, we I take notes. I know my top, three, <laughs> we, I know my top take three notes and I don't want to mention them yet. Okay. Did I, did I did I mention spend the night yet? No. So, so no. spend the night, I would say it was number four. Okay. And and this was as I said, Harry and Teddy sing for us. He did that before yeah, fantasy. Yeah. So this was us Harry and Teddy sing for the first time and stuff. We can spend the night. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a great it's a great song. Yeah, it's, it's a great can song. You, can you answer who came up with that yep yep? I I wasn't there when, when 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 Teddy first did that. I don't know where he get that from. I never asked him about it either. That's so funny that I never asked him about it. Because in 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 that suspend the night, it says, um, here's Timmy, and he, and you hear yep yep, and what Teddy says yep yep. So it it was like who's who 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 introduced it and stuff. So I didn't know. I wonder, I just thought... if, I, I wonder if I could text him, if I could if I could text him, and will yeah. he answer me before the interview's over? <laughs> hey, go, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we, 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 we're slowing it down. So, oh, are you are you using your phone? You want okay? Yeah, if you go ahead. It has to be Teddy though. Yeah. Don't well, it? I he, he's the one right? it. No, 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 no. It's fine. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can text him. 
Okay, that's fine. This is going to be an exclusive. If Thanks, you, if... Paddy Ryan and Mike on <laughs> Sunday. You can hear on the uh, New Jack Swing podcast. Exclusive yeah. Here. But but it, it is an interesting story because somebody thought because I when you listen to Spend the Night, that's the first time you hear Yep Yep. And Aaron is introducing Donna. This is Teddy. Yep. And Donna, then this is Timmy. And you hear Yep Yep. And but then in throughout the record, you're hearing Yep Yep by I, I assume was Teddy. Um, so that was just that was um that was just something that I just did, just wanted to find out, you yeah. know, just to clear up. But, and then you also hear him when he's doing I wanna. He's saying it in I wanna too. Um I don't think he did um yep. Yeah, yeah, he did it. And I wanna. He did it in there okay. too. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll listen to that. Yeah, he'll 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 come back. He's yeah, he's he's getting in touch with Teddy, so um, but I, I know Teddy is very familiar with this because, he, he, you know, a number of people have reached out to him. So he uh, and plus Teddy used to follow me. Um, yeah. Anyway, but anyway, so as we go around, so we are down to um, um, number three, our top three. So Sheldon, what makes you number three? My number three is don't clap, just wow. dance. You know, I yeah, love, I, I love yeah. the record. I love, you know, the, the guy of Temples, man. I really love him. You know, I love the storyline there in the club, and then I love the the chant because what they're doing, they're incorporating this record that came out on Sugar Hill Records called uh, uh, "Let's Dance," and there's a hook that they're singing. I got the feel, and let's dance. Come on, get down. And then you hear it. They they throw it in there, you know, right before they get to, like, I guess the last verse or whatever, man. So you hear them singing it. So I remember hearing that record, and I was like, wow, this is just mm -hmm. like, it's one that I love. I love to sing along with at the time, and I just love to play it. And then the remix oh, is okay. great. The remix, the remix is, oh, my God. It just takes your record to the next level, man. I need to listen yeah. to that. I haven't heard the remix of that. Um, I just, I just yeah. as I said, it's just actually, it's probably, it's, it is, you know, really, yeah, just dance, don't, just, yeah, don't, yeah, just don't, uh, if you listen to it, it is, it just feels just the, just, just the, um, it just it's feels the sort of thing, you know, you're going out to a club for the night on a Saturday night, you, you, before to get yourself in the mood, you'd put that on, get your vinyl 12 inch out, put that on, and that would really, That'd really get you in the mood for going out and going out for a night out. You you see for me anyway. But yeah. going out on a Saturday night to a club, I, you know, yeah. I play a few swing twelves. That'd be one of them. Stick it on, and I'd be ready then. To go. And, and and when and when that record came out, they weren't making R and B records like that. You know, in terms of going back, like going to a party, everything was like. It changed. It was Luke Devandros, Freddie Jackson, and Elder Barge. So you didn't have the party records. You didn't really have them. You know, you had like the funk bands kind of, they were doing it early on. But, you know, at that point in 88, you didn't have like party dance mm -hmm. records, man. And they just resonated with people, you know, like you said, going to a club. It's just like, think about it. You know, it's like, it's like a per, it's bookended. It's a perfect companion. And when you look at like Just Got Paid, you know, it's a simple concept. Yeah, I'm getting money. I got paid going to the club. You know, now I'm in the club. I'm seeing girls standing on the wall, you know. And then he talks about, I see a move or two creeping out of the attitude. Like, she's there. You know, just the whole lyrical aspect of it. So, yeah. Timmy, Timmy's writing style, I love it, man, because it's very, it's very conversational and it's very observational. So, it's like he's taking an everyday concept. And he's turning it into a song, but it's something that you can definitely relate mm. to. So his his songwriting is, is, is but really you have good. Aaron delivering you know? it, and they have Teddy putting the music to it. So yeah, you can, you can just see how they just worked as as a unit. But I think when you okay, he's back. Okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. And, oh, and right. I, I, my my phone froze. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, we can. We can yeah, we, we can see you. My, what is happening here? My phone froze. Sorry, <laughs> my phone froze up. What happened? No, no, it's fine. I, you, I think you sent it back on. 
No, it's fine. No, we, we, we're waiting huh? for you and stuff. Oh, you send your text, so hopefully he'll respond before we end, right? I, I didn't even send a text. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. That is right. I'll ask him later. I don't want no, to have a chance to lose, losing the donation signal. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, Hello? We were just going into our top... Th we just went into our top three, and uh, Sheldon had his number three was um, don't clap, just uh, don't just dance, don't clap your hands. And we were just talking wow. about how Timmy's writing, Teddy's production, and Aaron's vocals, how they just made um, a, just an amazing track. Do you remember Chlorell, a record that came out? It was a popular record in New York, uh, Sugar Hill Records, West Street Mob. Let's dance. I got the feeling. Let's dance. Come on and get out. It was like an up tempo record. Yeah. And you, and so you hear they throw they they put that hook somewhere in that record. So that's yeah. what really really stood out when I heard that record back yeah, then. Yeah, I forgot about that song. Oh, that song was fly. I remember that song. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Stevie, number three. Um. Any of this top three could be number one for me. I don't even know why this is at number three because it is it's a number one record. Um I thought it was I'm I'm under the impression it was the first single, and I'm sticking with the fact that it is the first single, but Groove Me is at number three for me. And again, I don't know why, because it's it's a number one track. Mm. Classic. Me give you the yellow card. <laughs> 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 oh goodness yeah okay that's Jim. um my number three um is peace of my love um and i think it would have been a little bit high had not the it wasn't as clear to the 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 because as i said aaron seemed like he's sitting sleep singing in the in the cupboard it's been covered quite a bit um i think marias covered it didn't he um, and then who was it? Was it um, Tupac on the All Eyes on Me? Um, yeah. You can have, yeah, Peace of My Love, yeah. Um, but I think um, Timmy mentioned, um, when I asked him about the song, he's talked about, you know, at that point he was just <laughs> like a single guy. He was like, man, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm you know, this, you can get a little bit of it, but I'm not giving you all, you know, you know. And he just got off his bass, and he was that you so you can hear the bass from throughout it. So he wrote to, on his to, with his bass the track, and um, but yeah, so yeah, that that just yeah, that that was okay. So yeah, so run the streets, of Tupac, yeah, that's that that the who sampled it, and you know, it's just a beautiful track. And I think during that time as well, it's probably one track that has endured because if you think about a lot of stuff that Hastown and R. Kelly and Jodeci were doing with that their ballads, it was built on that. And I and I think that's what Guy fell away from. Or the, you know, without Timmy, they couldn't replicate that type of slow jam. Because Less Chill is, is okay, but it, it's not, I didn't think it's, it's more, it's memorable, but it's not, I don't think it was as, me as, as strong as Peace of My Love or any of the, or, or any of the ballads on, on the debut album. Peace of My Love was dope, and it's like once again when you go back to Tommy style, um, Timmy style of writing, you know, conversational, taking an everyday experience and just injecting it into a song. Like what he says, there's a few things in my past that can't be explained, mm -hmm. you know, just you know, just that whole mystery, you know, storyline or whatever. So it was dope record, man, dope record. A question about Aaron that Akin has just sent. He says, "What made um, it says, folks said that Aaron sounds like Charlie Wilson, but what makes him sound like Charlie? The tone of his voice. I mean, he, and his, and he's probably greatly influenced by him. He's 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 greatly influenced by Charlie Wilson and Stevie Wonder. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's just who he loves. But I mean, he just he, Aaron just naturally sounds that way." You know what I mean? It's not like he's trying to make his voice sound that way. Aaron's just naturally Charlie Wilson and Stevie Wonder mixed together. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, and that's who Charlie is. You know, Stevie Wonder's one of Charlie's, you know, uh, inspirations or whatever. That whole church melisma type voice, yeah. you know. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and Max, so Timmy Gatling wrote... Um, uh, 
What's the song by Bell Biff DeVoe? I do need need you. When will, and, um, when, yeah. when, I get, when will I see you smile? When I can see you smile again, yeah. then um, talk to myself by um, by um, Christopher, Christopher Williams. Williams. I do need you. He also did um, stuff for Jasmine Guy. Um, he did. He wrote and did, did he do Ralph? Did he, he do did, Ralph? He did one for Ralph. Yeah. And he and he also did, for Ralph. do what I gotta do. Is that no, what the one? Now, yeah, yeah. I don't know. yeah. Then he also did. Um, Make you sweat by Keith Sweat, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had a few uh, hits. Uh, he had a, he wrote a few hits. He yeah, so he, he had his, he had his stuff, but I guess uh, you know, Carell, did you ever listen to the um, that new Jack Swing podcast? What was the so what was that that um, Jack? Did you ever listen? He was in it. He was in it. I think he was in it. Oh, you talking about you the, know, one about, about, the Jack? Yeah. You talking about the podcast? But it just yeah, he was in it. Yeah, I was in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, it's they probably the me first. Oh, I, I I would say it's probably it, you know even if it was even though it was an audio documentary I think even if it was visual I don't think it would make a difference it was probably one of the best best yeah, it was good. best piece of um, documentary that I've listened to uh, it was heartbreaking especially hearing about Marsha and Teddy and Gene doing what he could to split that up thinking that somebody was gonna get into his ear that uh, that whole thing how life could have been different. Um, and Teddy and Timmy talking about when he saw them at the forum and they just drove past him like they didn't know him. I mean, oh goodness. I can't imagine the kind of heartbreak when everything you've worked for, it goes out and they do, and you're out of it and, and the, being on the Apollo and all that stuff. It, it, it's yeah. probably, I, if, I always tell people, if you've not listened to Jack, Search it on any podcast. It's it's it is heartbreaking, but it's the most amazing piece of history about New Jack Swing and about whole Teddy and Gene and Timmy and and everything. Yeah, it's so yeah. hard. Yeah, that, that yeah, and then that was powerful. And then the story that you shared when um, the authorities came and they shut the shut the label down, shut the office down, and you went up there to go get your stuff, and they let you get your stuff out of there. That's just. That was that oh man, that was a powerful. You story, know when Gene got, got arrested that, for drugs. That, that was a life changing day. That life change that day changed my life for the worse. Is as, as as much as getting signed changed my life for the better. It's like you literally get get you know your life changes overnight. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, Correct. What makes you number three? Number three. Uh, know that it's true. You can call me crazy. Yep, definitely that. I love that song. So that could have been you, because that's your voice, right? That's your was that, that your, yeah, your yeah. Cut? I definitely that could have sang that song. <laughs> I definitely could have sang that song. Like definitely. I remember when I'll be sure first hit really big. This producer, this guy named Alan George, he was the one that wrote he he produced somebody else's guy for, for Jocelyn Brown. I don't know if y'all know that song. Okay, yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. saw me one time, he's like, I'll be sure his whole album should be yours. And I just I was sitting, <laughs> oh, wow. just sitting there like Yep, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you can call me crazy. Wow, wow. Could, have you ever I mean you've got you've got your your, your studio um at home. Have you ever thought about interpreting the guy album? You just you know, just sing it, just recording it, and then put it out you there. You know, and say, I, 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 I'm gonna do it because you mentioned that to me last time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> do at least, I'm, I'm gonna at least do two of them. At least yeah. do two of them. I gotta just do it. <laughs> if, if I'm gonna, because I'm gonna be putting out covers soon anyway, so I might as well do I definitely do some of those. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I would think the guy, the guy album and probably an updated version of Kids of Work. At, if it was done the way it should have been done. Well, yep, and, you can call me crazy, and I like it's definitely an updated version of Kids at Work to me. Yeah, you see. Because they're more, they still kind of pop, they have a, they have a pop appeal to them. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I mean, that's you know, that's how you, you start linking the whole circle of your know, Kids at Work guy and, and the role you played. And and then it gets yeah it you know I'm not talking about just going viral but it would be a, just a way of people like wow you know because I guess most people you you know unless they look for, it's hard, hard it's kind of hard to find you on IG because you're not using your your main name 
yeah. and stuff like that. But um, I don't even know how I, who, how I, you know, did, I can't remember how Jackie I connected Mc with you. I, 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 I connected with, I, call, I contacted you. Yes. Yes. And I, and I, yes. And I didn't, I didn't I actually, I didn't ever thought, I didn't think you existed anymore because you know, when you, <laughs> you, you, you have a lead, you have a name and like kids at work and then you just don't hear anything anymore. So it's like, yeah. oh my goodness, he's still, he's, he's still around and it's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> it's crazy. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been, I've been uh, behind the scenes, I guess. Yeah, but now, as I said, you know, people, people are seeing you, people are connecting, and um, and even when you said that stuff about Timmy about comparing him to a Melvin Riley Jr. with yeah. the, with the swag of D'Angelo, Timmy appreciated that he posted it on his on his page and stuff like that because I guess people, yeah. can, you know, it, it was good to be able to hear uh, hear yeah, you say I that. I'm telling you, man. I don't know what it is about my life. I'd be right near right near it like where i'm at now right this is i'm in my new york apartment now you know what i mean i, I have a house in, in in baltimore but i'm in i have a new york apartment here i live right next door to where puffy p diddy and 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 um and um and um cassie lived right next door wow. the next building the next building from this building right here is where p diddy and C cassie lived and i used to see them every day you know what I mean? Every day. At least every day they was in town. Like crazy. <laughs> I'd be like right there. <laughs> like I'm 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 like I'm probably like a I'm probably like 30 feet away from Universal. I'm like 30 feet away from Universal right now. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry. The the word says that it it will happen slowly, but when it does, it will blows up. So don't worry, you still the time is still there. So <laughs> Yeah. I'll be right there. Uh, Mm. We, so we just did um okay so you you, you no, sheldon what's your number two yeah, um my number two is is teddy's jam wow <clears throat> and the thing about teddy jam that stood out for me is when i first heard that record i was just trying to in my mind just kind of picture figure out how he was putting all of the sounds together in that record because there's a lot going on you get the samples you're getting the um, trouble for pump me up sample. Just a lot. You hear you're hearing the, the tramp, the champ single or uh, sample, and just him, the keyboards and everything, man. And you know, and then of course, because we were just talking about the Gap Band, and when I was going back doing my research, because I was a huge Gap Band fan, Gap Band had their own kind of version that had come out like about five years before that. It was called Jam to the Mother. And if you ever listen to the hooks, Charlie's doing the thing that Aaron's doing, like that you hear Aaron doing later. You know, telling people to jam, you know, it's a different tempo, obviously, because of the different time period. But then what happens is after Teddy's Jam comes out, then the Gap Band comes out with an album like in 89 called Round Trip. And then now they got a record called Jam. And then Charlie Wilson comes out with his first solo album in 92. Hmm. And he's got a record called Charlie's Jam. So, you know, that record is really, really just it's an influential record, man. And when you look at that joint, you didn't have any R&B records that were like that anymore. Everything had kind of like changed. Like Clarell said, you had a new edition, Freddie Jackson. So you didn't have those those funky records didn't really exist anymore, man. So when that's one of the things to unsung about God is they brought a lot of funk yep. back. So um, that record is a, you know, very, very dope record. Very, you know, I love it, man. And the remixes, I love them all. I love the Teddy's Jazz with the acoustic guitar when he's got the vocoder, then the one that you sang on all the time. I used to play it. I got, the, I still got the 12 inch, but I bought back in 88 and the one that they play on Soul Train. Wow. You know, I just love it, man. You know, it's like seven minutes long. Super dope, man. So every remix from that Teddy's Jam off that guy album, man, I love it. Wow. So yeah. And, and, that, and that Teddy, Teddy, I was like, who I was singing was that? I didn't realize it was you, my goodness. And you just said it as if it was no big deal. <laughs> I thought it might have been like maybe Marsha or somebody like that, but this is my man doing it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was dope. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's your number two. Stevie, what about your second? Um, it, it's a track that it was an instant fave when I first heard it back then. And it's it stayed with me all this all this time. I mean, 
you know, when I first played that guy album back then, it, you know, the feeling it gave me, it, I, I knew then it, this is like the best album I think I've ever heard in my life. And, <laughs> you know, as I've kept collecting albums and music, I'm always looking to get that feeling that I got from the guy. And I never, I never quite get it. I'm always, it's like a drug in it. It's like that, that drug that it's that hit you get. And I'm always looking for that hit from, from this guy album. But, um, my number two, it give, gives me that hit, and that's I like. You know, it always still, to, you know, it just still gives me that hit. Still, still gives me the goosebumps. It's a great record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised when it went viral just uh, over during the pandemic? I was happily surprised because I thought it's, you know, because it's brought the song to a whole new generation that probably may have never heard that before, and may, may go and check out Guy now. So I was, I was so happy. <laughs> what I was so happy about that. I, I, I remember when I interviewed Coco and her son J J Michael, and I asked him asked him, him him for his favorite song, and he said I like, and I'm like, wow, that I, I have you heard the story of of how Timmy uh, wrote it? And Coco said, yeah, I watched that interview. Like, what man? What I'm like, wow, people probably had seen at least they're hearing the story of of Timmy. You know the unsung things about the lyrics he brought brought to the table, um, and you know, and probably people get to understand why the future album sounds completely different, and it doesn't see. And you know, you can say things change and and age, but it just feels as if there was a structure and a story that kind of left, and it felt as if you know we're going to try and do a hard left. You know, I, I, you know, some might say it was, um, you know, the Poison album and Hootie Mac. It, 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 you know, I don't know if if you would want to compare how the two were, but anyway, but it's good the fact that Guy um, have been recognised. My number two actually is a song that um, I still think it's still um, it's still a major thing now, and that's Groove Me um it, it it you know the whole you know the whole the, even the the video the 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 whole um the whole the dude it, it sounds very much uptown when i hear that it seems as if that was one of the uptown that was like a because when you think of guy you don't really think uptown records even though they were signed to uptown records because they they felt like they were bigger than the, that label but that seems to con- that track seems to connect Uptown, that whole that's that anthem felt like it connected a whole uptown movement with that particular record, and um, it it just felt it you know when you hear especially if you listen to that Jack podcast, it felt like that record was um, it just didn't it didn't make sense for an R and B track that could talk to the streets. It felt like that was a track where people like went, well, what is this? I mean, for yourself, Carell, when you first heard it, I mean, Timmy says that Teddy called him and, and said come to the house and he saw the kids in the house and he said all the kids all the background noise it was the kids in the house just dancing and singing along and he just started writing to the stuff but he said it was so funky that Teddy was playing it was so funky that it was just like he just couldn't help to write to it so he even admitted I mean Teddy just created this this funky track and he was like man I need to start writing how was it for you when you first I mean, if you're around and heard, I didn't. I didn't see the funny thing about it. I, that song I didn't hear before it came out. I ain't hear it till it came out. I don't. I don't. If I heard it, I don't recall. They, that might have been one of the last songs they made or something. Because I never. I never heard that song before it came out. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I couldn't even tell you. Uh, all I know, I love it. That song to me represents what the guy albums is sound is all about. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely is a classic. What's your second, then? What makes yours? Your same second? thing. The same thing. Okay, groove me. Yeah, see, I like. I remember. I remember being in the being in the car with Teddy when the song came on. <laughs> no, I was in the car with Teddy one time, and, and he pulled up. He pulled up, and he went inside some 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 big club or something like that. And they was and they were playing it when he got upstairs or something like that. You know what I mean? So that song really represents when me and Teddy was was like. Re- was hanging out again, you know what I mean. When that song was out, that's why I like. I like. I love hearing that song. That song is perfect. Perfect. Right, song. 
Mm. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, before now, what we what we're going to try and do is um, what we're going to try and do now is go through our t- our, our top ten um, before we get to number one. Just recap, recap yeah, we, ten to two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, St- uh, Sheldon, do you want to go from number ten down to number? Yeah. Okay, so my number 10 uh, is My Business. Number nine is Round and Round, Merry Go Round of Love. Eight is Peace of My Love. Seven is Spend the Night. Six is I Like. Five is Goodbye Love. Four is You Can Call Me Crazy. Three is Don't Clap. Stance. And then number two is Teddy's Jam. Okay. And then what's your number one then? Well, my number one is my favorite record of all time groove me man you know and you know you all talked about a lot about the record and just going back hearing the record just i love guy you know one of my all-time favorite groups but i remember man i was such a gap band fan since i was like eight nine years old when i first heard the entire cassette i was living in hawaii at the time my man brought the cassette tape back from virginia he was like, yeah, man, these guys, I know they went to Virginia State, boom, 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 and he played it. And then he played it straight through. And I got angry because I was such a, I was such a Gap Band fan. I was like, what are they doing? And at that time, I was calling myself, like, I was like, trying to write songs or whatever, man. And I said, let me borrow that tape. Took the tape home, and I pulled out like an old, <laughs> old Gap Band album cover that had like the, all the information to the record label. And I literally wrote them cast a letter. I was like, look, these guys got this album out. I, I, I could I could bring you back <laughs> because at that time at that, at that time they had like faded right, but then I played the tape again and it was like it was like crack man and I, I was I was hooked so at that point all the I didn't the hate I was saying I wouldn't call it hate but all the dislike that I had I loved the record and I was trying to just when I heard Groovy I was just trying to just really just break the record down man because it was so much going on. With, with the sounds and whatnot and like you said that's the ultimate record ultimate uptown record in a way it's like almost the ultimate new york r&b record because obviously you hear my man with the swing the drum machines and the keyboards but then when he throws the the, the, the champ break beat in there so if you're hearing it if you're a new york guy and you're hearing the record you know the break beat and it's just really fly so it's fly when he just drops that in there, man. He just lets it play. Another thing, too, is that he, it's like it just plays out. You know, like a lot of records they have, they have the breakdowns or whatever, and you start seeing a lot of records, they started moving away from breakdowns, man, and, you know, a lot of contemporary R&B, but that was one of the, you know, last contemporary R&B songs that really had this super funky, funky breakdown that just played out, had the turntable scratch in it where, you know, and of course, Damien was saying that it was a mistake in the studio and they just kept it. But that's a man, Groove Me is my all time favorite record, man. I play that record at least in a month. I play that record at least five times a month, man. I love it. I love it, man. And then they had the nice samples, they had the James Brown funky president mixed in there. Just, oh my God. Just, yeah, the whole night, man. Just, yes. And then the video on top of it. And when I saw that, it was like, that's what a, a new young R&B group is supposed to look like. That's what they're supposed to sound like. So, you know, I can go on for days and days, but Groove Me is my number one, man. <laughs> yeah, uh, Air Max is... Uh... Great, great, uh, great, great, uh, great run down there, Sheldon. Great, great story behind White Shore, number one. Brilliant, mate. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Stevie? <laughs> uh, number 10 was Don't Clap, Just Dance. Number 9 was Round and Round. Number 8 was My Business. Number 7 was Goodbye, My Love. Um, sorry, Goodbye, Love. Number 6, Peace of My Love. Number 5, Teddy's Jam. Number 4, Spend the Night. Number 3, Groove Me. Number 2, I Like. As I told you in the week, Namdi, I, this, was, this top 10 was... I drafted it. It was supposed to be a first draft. I did it on Wednesday night and I thought, I'll come back to it and do a few more drafts and change a few things. I didn't quite do that because I thought, what's the point? I mean, whatever position you put all these in, you're never going to be fully happy with it. 
So I've just stuck with the first draft. Um, but the reason why this is my number one, a couple of reasons. I, I personally relate to the song. And it's, it's the drum pattern, and the drum groove, the way the drums are programmed. I, I've never heard anything like it on another swing track before. It was just totally original, the way these... This, this, it just stayed with me. The, the, the lyrics about, you know, back to back girls all night, and like I say, I totally rate to the song. Um, when, when I'm when I'm when I'm coming home on public transport most nights, and I go back to the album, I tend to listen to my business and this track. I just got these two tracks. So what I'm saying is, just over the years, it's grown and grown on me. But you can call me crazy is my number one. Wow. I'm surprised myself, but <laughs> like that, that drum groove and for me the first verse is one of the greatest first verse that I've ever heard in a new Jack song. Just love the first verse and it goes into the chorus, but yeah, you know, okay. and it's it's an app, you know, who'd have thought that when from originally buying the guy album that 35 years on, I'd be sat on this podcast tonight with you guys and Clarell talking about it. It's a real pinch me moment. <laughs> It's a real pinch me moment. I never thought I'd ever ever have the opportunity to do something like this. So thank you guys and thanks for the thanks for the listeners out there. <laughs> you know, we're all feeling the same thing about this album that we're sharing. I think. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that 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 that's definitely a, a big surprise and stuff. And um, and you know, history was made. The fact that everyone knew that Albie Shaw sang the first verse, uh, but but as you know. And I actually used to wonder, because when Damien came on the scene in the Future album, I'm, I'm sure like most of us were like, the videos come out and we see Timmy, and no, those of us who don't know Timmy couldn't equate, right? How's that guy in on the album cover, not in the videos? And, and no one gave, no one explained anything. And so, and I mean, then when you listen... What we've learned about this album recently through, through your, you know, through your half time chat channel, is the influence of Timmy Gatlin on this album. He's obviously got a you we know that Teddy made the album, but Timmy Gatlin, and I've learned this now, and like you say, you can call me crazy. That's a t it's just it's Timmy Gatlin. And I owe to him and he should get flowers for that. So that's what I've learned more about his influence on this album, which is huge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's it def, def, definitely it's um um and maybe that's why Gene took it back because he's like Man, this is too big for for Albert Shaw. We're taking it back, but you can see the similarities with um, um, what's the one he did with Slick Rick? Um, if I'm not a lover, lover it, the, the the similarities with with that. Um, okay, I'm going to go through my top ten. At number ten was Round and Round. Number nine was My Business. Number eight, <laughs> you can call me crazy. Um, if you listen to it again, Stevie, just just listen and then listen to the second fan. Just think. How, uh, the, I'll have to. Timmy, and, you, you, and especially with your headphones, you you will be able to tell the difference in in the vocals. In there, number six was Teddy's jam. Number five, don't clap, just dance. Number four was I like. Number three was Peace of My Love. Number two was Groove Me. And I, I I'm surprised you guys didn't have <laughs> this at number one. Um, our all time favorite um, female, um, our New Jack singer. We didn't know who she, who was on this stuff, and it was Timmy who says that Tammy Lucas was singing backgrounds on this track. He was like, "Yeah, Tammy," a, he, you know, because when you look at the guy album, Gene Gim didn't put any credits there, like who wrote what. He just took it all out. I mean, in time, we, we were able to see Timmy's name in there, but we're always like, "Who sang the background? Who was singing there?" And he was like, "It was Tammy Lucas." So he was the first one to really say it was Tammy. And then when Tammy comes on, she said, yeah, it was supposed to be like a duet, like a make it last forever. But it feels as if when, you know, they they toned down more her vocals, so it was supposed to be more of a duet. And maybe that's Gene thinking, yeah, yeah, no, we, we don't want too much of this lady in, on, on that. But it, it is just, that's the whole story with Timmy talking about, you know, you know, he, they were going on, they were going on, he said, he said they were going on doing some shows that don't go on tour. And he was like, um, you know, he was saying goodbye. You know, he, he the whole what he was writing and stuff like that. So to me, this is and I said to me that this song is probably the one that they said is most their most sampled track 
because it still sounds like it can be released today and still be current. Um, it, it it is what Jodeci and everyone else took 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 uh, built their stuff on, and like, man, this is how you make a slow jam. Goodbye, love. Goodbye, love. Yeah, I, it's a slow and jam. Then, and then you, you and you hear like you said bits and pieces. You know, you hear the you know Nas is Nas did. You know, he sampled it. You're hearing the Mary J. Mm. She has it. The whole lushness. You know, in the background. Baby don't go. Just, Doom. Baby don't go. Oh, you know, just it's yeah. like I mean, it it is it is just them. Um, why they didn't release it? I don't. You know, I don't understand. But then, then again, Gene Griffin, who understands him, you know, he, he, you know, because this album should have gone. It was double platinum, but it could have gone at least diamond if they had just. But, but the thing is, the record it went platinum in the year that it, the next year it came out, but it didn't do double platinum until like five years yeah. later. So, but think about it is that, but when it came out, the record came out like two and a half, almost three years before SoundScan. And see, when SoundScan was important because when you when back when you had SoundScan, you could scan the records, and you could track the sales on the spot. But back then, you know, you had to just kind of like wait, and uh, the record had sold a million. But in 1989, it was the biggest. You know, it was the number. It was considered the number one R&B record, and it, and it had a it was slow. Yeah, it was slow out the gate because obviously we know what was going on with Don't Be Cruel or whatever. And I remember seeing the ads in the magazine. This is before, you know, social media. And I remember finally seeing an ad in Right On Magazine and they had an ad for the Guy album and it had, and it had platinum. And that was like a year later, man. But yeah, influential album, yeah, man. I, I think just the, the, the singles they released and stuff, you know, the whole thing. But well, what a surprise, Namdi, that you've picked a ballad. And, you know, to continue our weekly joke, if David Foster was going <laughs> to pick any track to produce on that album, he'd have picked Goodbye, My Love. Without a doubt. <laughs> no surprise, I, Namdi's I, number one there. But I don't think he would do a good... David Foster moment, moment again. I don't think he'll do good, as good a job as what Teddy and Timmy did with, with the track. And that's the thing we were saying, Corolla, how Teddy, Timmy, and Aaron did the, the trifecta. Timmy with the, the pen, Teddy with the production, and Aaron with the delivery. And the secret sauce was Tammy Lucas. I mean, for all, all of us who, you know, to find out that she was on the, she was there at the very beginning of the Guy album, that, that, that was mind blowing for me. And I'm like, what? She was back then? And she was just like, yeah, I was just hanging around. And she also talked about I like, you know, she was doing all the vocal punk, dum, 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 I like, and how they just took her vocals. And then she was, you know, so that, that's to me. Shout that's, that's Definitely shout out to Tammy Lucas. I haven't seen her since those days. And I hope you're doing well, baby. I've seen, I've seen <laughs> the interview I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 album, the album was dope because it was like, you know, sometimes, like, like I said, he did the record in his house. And then sometimes you go in the studio, they kind of clean it up. You know, the sound is a lot clearer, you know, just the whole sonic approach to it. But it's like, I'm glad that they kept it raw the way it was. They already recorded it at home. It was just, it was, it, it didn't sound, it was just, it didn't sound like overproduced. It wasn't clean. It was just, it was, it was dope, raw, man. Like and then, in, in, and with you being, you know, a, a singer, when did you see, where all of a sudden, you know, after that album dropped, especially Groove Me and all the other records, that now you start seeing vocalists now trying to, I won't say sing like Aaron, but you start to see that vocal inflection. Because before, you were there when the tenors and the falsettos were still the thing. Mm -hmm. But at what period did you see the, the transition from that style to what Aaron was doing and everybody else coming behind it? I guess when they started, when with, with the emergence of Jodeci and all of these people, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know, like honestly, if it wasn't for a piece of my love, there wouldn't there wouldn't be no um 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 bump and grind. R. Kelly, you know what I mean? So even how about fact, the run? Matter of fact, R. Kelly was the first person I saw do that because I, I saw R. Kelly R. Kelly before he came out because I, my my manager at the time was trying I think was 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 up to was trying to sign him as a as an artist. So I remember when he was mm -hmm. with MGM. You know what I mean? He already and he already had reminded me of Aaron. You know what I mean? So I don't know. That's I, I think Barry Kelly Barry was the first person. He's talking uh -huh. about Barry Hankerson there. Barry Hankerson. 
Nah, I'm talking about Buddy the Harry guy with Levaber Mallison. Levaber Mallison. Oh, he was, they, oh, he's down with Mo yeah, D. Yeah, he's down with Mo yeah. D and all those cats from the rooftop yeah. and all those guys. Yeah. Yeah, we still in touch. He was just up, up here the other day, you know. Yeah. So he he, he was the first person to tell me about uh, tell me about R. Kelly. Uh -huh. When 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 Al Kelly was was on that Natalie Natalie Natalie, Natalie Cole um show, he was on uh, he was in a, a single contest. Breaks. Yeah, it was like uh, some big break yeah, or some big break or something uh, like your, that. Yeah, your, yeah, <laughs> yeah, your big break. Yo, your musical knowledge is crazy. <laughs> Hey man, I, I just hope that you know, ten years from now, I'm 55 now. When I turn 65, I still got my memory. <laughs> God, your musical knowledge is crazy. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you. So, uh, Corel, what what's your all time favorite one on the album? Then, yeah, because I def I'm definitely not gonna remember all ten of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to write it down. I want to write yeah. it down. I'm like, what piece of my what? I don't know what the heck. Okay, so drum roll. I like. Wow. And the reason why I say I like is because to me, the quint uh, the quintessential definition of a hit record, especially if it's an up tempo record, is when you can hit people in the feet and in the heart at the same time. If you can make somebody, it, it's hard to 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 take an up tempo and hit people in the heart because heart songs that hit you in the heart are usually ballads. I like hits you in the heart because of the melody and the chords. But the groove hits you in the feet. You still want to dance to it, especially the da 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 da. You know what I mean? It's like crazy, and just loving basketball. Period. <laughs> you read my mind. I was about to bring that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the ultimate. Yeah, like, read my mind. Not, oh, that's the ultimate, ultimate movie for the from the from the nineties. Loving basketball, and that song is, is loving basketball. That song and just got paid. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. I love that song. I love that. Song. And then the intro was intro was yes. great. The intro to yes. the record. Oh man! It's, even though you made it number six, but you know it's okay. Though. <laughs> hey man! But you know, I, I like honestly, the. Uh, honestly, I'll be honest with you. All of our differences of opinions, because we all got different songs in different place, places. That's just a testament of how amazing that album is, because. Most albums that you hear, there's all everybody picks the same song for the yeah. best yeah. one and two and three. You know what I mean? You think of Jackson Five, you definitely gonna think of I Want You Back in ABC and 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 I'll Be There and everything else is a distant second. But that album is all it's like any it's any man's game. Any song mm. could be them. Any song could be the one. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a great album. I give them all the props in the world. That's an amazing album. They did a great job and. It's, it's a damn shame that they ain't getting it back together to do another one. Those same people yeah, that's, should that's get back together. For all four of those guys should go in the studio and do another album and put everything yeah. all to the side. You, you, you know, they did, there was a tell you work with a group. It was called Bad Rabbits, and they had their own version where they had actually sampled Groove Me. It was a record called I Just Want to mm, Dance. That was a good one. And, you, and it was exciting. It was 2014. And I heard it. And this you hear Groove Me underneath mm -hmm. it, you know, sample, replayed it or whatever. It was just dope. But you're right. It would be good to see those guys, man, just, you know. It, it would be amazing. Yeah. You yeah, know, but yeah. you know, it is what it is, man. Here in the UK, we, we had two sort of pop groups, one called Busted and one called McFly. And they called what was it called, Stephen? Or Steve? They think they were called um, McBusted or something like that. So it was like it was like, and because one of the the lead singer of um, of I think Busted, I can't remember, did, said he didn't want to sing with everyone. So the two other groups came to 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 you know, one lead singer didn't want to join in. So the two people came together and formed this kind of super group and went on tour and stuff like that. And so we're wondering if we could ever have. Kids to guy. Ah. <laughs> so Aaron might decide, you know, I'm not coming Kids back. Kids to guys, be called. Kids, Kids to guys, guy. yeah. So it'll be yourself and Timmy and Teddy and Damien and Kids to guy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I wish it'd be fun. At least, at least, at least on tour, it'd be nice. I just that's why I wish. I wish mm -hmm. that kids' work would have been a bit a bigger impact. Because if it if it would have been a big impact, I'd certainly be going on going on tour with Teddy. 
You know what I mean? Because Teddy actually wants me to go on tour with him, you know, for for whatever uh, upcoming tour he has. But I'm I don't think as as I don't think I'll be going on tour as, as a vocalist. <laughs> Yeah, you could have the guys as like the headline act and then supporting them, boys to men. There you go. Yeah, right. It would, be, it would be nice. Hey, guys, can you can you hold on just a second? I just got to do something right quick. Just keep, keep holding it on. Yeah, We're yeah, still, yeah. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's um, – I mean, I, as, it, as, as, as Kuro says, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'll put it back sort of when he does come back in. But as he said, it is um, – it is definitely good the fact that we've all had different selections for our top, uh, our top. You know, going through it, I think it's probably yes. Tough. It's an incredibly tough one to do. I think that because like yeah. you say, we've got we've all got a lot of favourites on that album. It doesn't yeah. matter. It really matters what positions they are. We we know that is a great, great, great album. You know. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we we're just reflecting on on the fact that we all had diff, diff, uh, uh, different opinions and 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 how good the album is, um, but it would be definitely great if if you um, because you're putting out videos for your coaching with with some of the artists that you're working on with, and we never we don't see you just you know we would be great for you just to do do a you know with either with your guitar or your keyboards and you are you are singing some of these songs. And um, just telling some of the stories behind mixing the kids at work with guys, so you could do re-record re, re, re one or two of your kids at work stuff, and then the songs that could have been demos, so that there's that connection and that sense of you know you got lots of New Jack fans who are familiar with both records, both albums, and stuff, and and being able to piece some pieces. Of, I mean, you know, we didn't realize that you 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 were doing Teddy Teddy Jam. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it would be it would be good just to be able to 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 do that song. So you know, who knows how it will take off and stuff like that. But you know, in yeah. your own time and stuff, yeah. in your own time. Yeah, it's been really dope, man. Because the stories you told, you shared in Jack, and then the earlier interview you did with Namdi, man, you just kind of like really filled in a lot of gaps. But you also set the tone of what was going on in that era in terms of you know groups in the music business you know you all where you're at and are you, you go on to C cbs and just yeah man a lot of oh, those are some great stories so i'm glad that you you know you really shared them you know that's gold man it. it's i gold. mean if you think about what he said about because we all know the story that kids at work were, were, were bubbling and then gene gets goes to prison and then it, it falls apart. But then he said, well, the reason why was because Gene, Gene saw that it was, it was doing well. So he needed to raise some cash to push it and promote it. And he got busted trying to raise money. <laughs> so that's why he went to jail. Something and like so that, just, yeah. just just being able to understand understand all, 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 all of that. But also the fact that, you know, you get the Timmy and Teddy weren't happy with the production and the mixing. And, and it wasn't what they... Th what they'd put in and how much yeah. of a difference that makes. Even with your hurt, um, what was it? Hurt, um, hurt town, hurt town. You know, yeah. it, 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 it wasn't what they put together, even though it's written and written no, by Tim and Teddy, but it doesn't sound like, uh, what Tim and Teddy would put together. So how no. much of a difference that makes when somebody tries to interpolate what yep. the original people could have done themselves. Cause he was doing, if he's doing a show and all the Kumo D stuff, at a young age, he could have easily have just gone in the studio and produced kids at work and even your stuff. Yeah, he should have been the producer. He was amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, Corel, it's been. Um, I'm really. I'm really. We're blessed that you took your time um, to spend it with us today. Um, Anytime, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, you know, I'm sure Stevie and, and Sheldon were really happy because as I said, they've seen the interview, but be able to. Actually, direct questions and and even the the, the community putting the questions in the chats. Um, it's, it's it's great that you you were there to be able to answer and to share those stories. Um, uh, Jeremy was asking, did you think that Teddy developed the New Jack sound during the, his time with Kids at Work? Well, um, Teddy, um, Teddy has all Teddy, Teddy came to us with that sound. 
he came to us with that sound before we finished the album but it wasn't time for it it was still it was still um you know cool it now and candy girl and all that kind of stuff that that, that was hot at the time you know what i mean so that was the sound that everybody everybody was going at was 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 chasing new addition at that time you know what i mean so it was a little it was a couple of years too premature but mm. you know what i mean it came it came it came it came when he was a teenager it came years before he came wow yeah Wow. So what, what what can we expect from you over the next couple of months then, if if anything to look out for? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, you know, I'm still doing, of course, I'm, I'm doing the, the, the production and everything. I'm, I'm working with a, I'm working with this kid named Rocco, who's, um, he's, uh, he's actually um, a kid that Teddy's producing. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm working with him and we're, we're developing him. He's, He's a uh, he's gonna be like probably big big as big as Justin Bieber them back in the day. He's gonna he he's a very cr charming charismatic kid who he's only 15 years old, 14 15 years old, and he loves his favorite producer is Teddy Riley, and his mm. favorite artist of all time is Michael Jackson, and his favorite favorite music of all time is is um Motown. It's like wow, <laughs> you know what I mean. Which is crazy because that's all my favorites, you know what I mean? So we we really connect and we we're doing some great things behind the scenes, and you know hopefully it'll, you'll you'll definitely see that coming soon. As far as me, uh, <laughs> I'm working on something that's that I, I can't really speak on. Mm. I can't really. Speak. It's weird to say. I want to speak on it, but I can't really speak on it because the whole marketing aspect of what I'm working on has to do with secrecy. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's understandable. I can't, I can't say anything right now. But when I do, when it does emerge, if it if it be, if it be, if it come, turns out the way I I I I think it's going to turn out, you'll be the first podcast I'm coming to. <laughs> I appreciate it. If this happens the way I think it's going to happen, it's going it's, it's going to change the game. But it's, I have to keep the secrecy because that's actually part of the marketing of it. Yeah, no. I mean, we totally understand. And as long as, you, as I said, it's good the fact that you do have stuff planned out oh, and yeah. stuff and yeah, yeah. and stuff. I, I, you, still, you still so you play? Um, how many instruments do you play now? I play guitar. I play drums. I play bass, and I play piano. Yep. Wow. And I, I play all of that because 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 honestly, mostly because of Teddy's influence. You know, because Teddy played all those instruments when I was a kid. So I'm like. Shit, I want to do that. I learned, you know, I had to, I, I literally, I deliberately tried to teach myself everything that Timmy and Teddy could do. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying I do it to the to the level they do it, but I, I aspire to I aspire to do it because I the older I got and the more the business changed, I see that like I always thought that if I'm the best singer and the best performer, that's enough. It's not enough. I had to be the best everything else. It's really sad. And now you gotta be the best marketer. It's the best marketers that make it now. <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah. about the numbers. So if you got the talent and you can market, that's a good thing. But most of the people that's doing the great marketing are the ones that that lack the experience of talent. I ain't gonna say they lack talent, but they lack the experience of talent. So yeah. they, you know, it's really, it's really sad. So how long I, did it take you to get proficient on the different instrument? Because obviously, you know, that stuff takes a lot of practice, a lot of time, and things of that nature. So when you, from the time you started, you know, until the time you really got proficient, well. How long did it take? A, the guitar was always something I kind of could play because my mother mm -hmm. bought me a guitar when I was nine. So I always had that in my back back pocket, even though I didn't really do it too much around Timmy and Teddy and them. When I met Timmy and them, I could play bass a little bit, you know what I mean? Because I had a bass at home. My brother had a bass at home. But as far as the piano, the piano and the drums, the drums came last because I got tired of hiring people. <laughs> I got tired of hiring people that, or, or, or getting my friends to play drums for me and they wouldn't show up to the studio. I learned the drums. I learned the drums by just by just being in a, rec a, a rehearsal studio where we used to teach vocal class at, and all the students would come out and sing their songs, and I would just be behind them playing the drums until until one thing led to another, until I was able to actually play, you know, officially by myself. You know what I mean? And I and I, I joined a, I joined a rock band just just to get my chops up. <laughs> <laughs> so you know? so so when did you see the shift between people wanting to maybe 
Rhyme or whatever that, or they, they, they started to want to become producers. When you look during that time, late 80s, mid 80s or whatever that is, when did you see people all of a sudden now wanting to become like producers now that the equipment it's, is available? It, it, it all started with Teddy. Teddy is the, is the originator of all of that. T Teddy was the first young boy producer that became famous. You know what I mean? So when Teddy became famous, everybody be, every, everybody wanted to be a producer. Everybody. That's when I started producing. When Teddy became, when Teddy started producing himself, that's when I was like, oh shoot, I wanted to start. You know, but it took, it took, it took, a, it took, it's just something that it takes. It took. In these days and times, you can learn how to produce just if you're not a if you're not a work at equipment because you know computers do everything for you. But in the mm -hmm. '80s and '90s, you couldn't produce unless you was a, unless you were dope. You just couldn't do it. And so it took me like it took like I could produce other people. But I couldn't. It took me twenty years to produce myself to to know how to produce myself because you you're too close to it. You know what I mean? So so were you all cutting tape back then? Were you all in the studio cutting tape versus yeah. what everybody's doing now? Yeah, man. It was like you know, it's, it's a whole another game, especially when you when you became by yourself. You know what I mean? Because you got to you had you had to have enough money. I mean, just the tape the tape alone would cost one hundred twenty five dollars. You know what I mean? Then you got to pay $175 or $75 at, at, at least an hour in the studio. You know what I mean? It's a whole, it's a whole different game now. I'm blessed. It's a, it is a blessing that you can do it all in your house now. I got, I got all the equipment I need right in my house. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I ain't got to go nowhere. So how long did it take you to like accumulate like your whole studio when you started collecting equipment? And I mean, that's like a right away thing because things, everything is so cheap now. Just, everything is so cheap. It's everything is so cheap now. It's like if if I came across something that was too expensive, I would just, I would just, I would just through through my credit, pay pay a monthly fee for it until until it was all paid for. You know what I mean? It's everything. Everything is so cheap now. Back in the day, you need ten thousand dollars to even think about equipment. Now you just need a couple of thousand dollars mm. <laughs> and a laptop. Yeah. When I guess just the funny story is um one of the things that that you said um that they they tried to get you they were timmy and teddy were doing their so their duo the two of them and they tried to get you back there was a condition that you refused and that was your <laughs> hair oh to cut my hair because <laughs> Carell had the jericho and he was like no i'm gonna stick with this and they said is it <laughs> they wanted they said look cut I it my hair long for a long time I wore my hair long for a long time. My hair always grew really fast. And I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> I guess I would have done it, but it was just like, ugh, leaving, leaving, wherever you find your popularity in whatever field you're in, it's hard to leave that era. It really, really is. And for me, it was hard to leave the 80s. <laughs> it was hard to leave the 80s. Had I been famous in 96 or semi famous in 96, it would have been hard to leave the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> it took a long time. It took a it took a long time. You know what I mean? All my friends, all my friends, all my friends, and all the people I hang around in the last twenty years are so much younger than me that that they they you know that's why I never I, I always stayed up to date. I I started to learn how to be up to date because after a while they, at first they'd be like, Yo, what 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 are you wearing? This ain't ninety six. What are you wearing? <laughs> what are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I had to change up, change up, change up, change up. So now it's like it's not it's a natural thing for me. So there was there, there was a story that Kanye talked about when he was working with uh, Jamie Foxx, and they were doing the record that we know was a slow jams record. Mm -hmm. And when he gets Jamie in there to sing, Jamie is singing like old R and B, mm -hmm. and 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 the record is like that. You want some Marvin Gaye, some Luther mm -hmm. Van. He's singing it like he's Lionel Richie or something, and Kanye's telling him, "No, we, you, you can't sing it like that." So, mm -hmm. when you look at your way of singing, did you have to adjust your approach to singing? You know, when you were hanging out with like the young boys in your crew, in terms of changing, or what did you have to change? Just the I, I didn't really have to change. I, don't, I didn't really have to change my approach of singing because my I always had a youthful sound. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know the the you know music has always been catered towards the youth, so it's always only thing I had to add to my repertoire that I didn't that I that I wasn't doing as a kid was 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 more control singing, 
you know, with the riffing and stuff like that. I had to add, I had to add that aspect to it. But, you know, by the time I got around, by the time I, I became a vocal coach and I got around younger people, I, oh, I already had that where I wish I would have adopted it when I was really young. You know what I mean? So do you think as a vocal coach that at, at, a, at a point in time, there was an over-reliance on the runs versus the articulation and everything? Yeah, the it still is. And, and I think it still is. I think I think that um, what they call soul singing should 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 come back, where you just so more or less singing from the heart, and the the, the ad libs and the, and the runs should be the added source, but not not the primary source. Or else there wouldn't have been a Lionel Richie or, or Keith Sweat or whoever these people who don't overly riff. You know what I mean? I think that you know I think people should sing strictly from the heart, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's been great. And, and you know, what, we're, we're, you know we're, we're definitely going to um, bring um, have you on even before you, your project comes out. Um, and I know you're going to give us that exclusive once you get back, when you hear back from Absolutely. Teddy on the origin of the Yep Yep. And, um, and hopefully, you know, as Stevie says, you know, you may give him a reminder. Hey, Teddy, you know they just did a guy to countdown stuff. Yes, you know, and see what he said. He might say, "Okay, I'll, I'll give him a couple of minutes or so," which 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 will be fine. Yeah, but definitely. We, yeah, we we've definitely been um, blessed by having you, and I'm sure um, those who've been watching too have been um, been blessed as well. So I'll just let Stevie and Sheldon say their final stuff. So anything final, Stevie? Uh, just what I said earlier. You know, thanks to, as to all the listeners, viewers. Says every week, thank you for tuning and watching this. You know, we, we appreciate all the, the viewers and that. And Clarell, thanks for coming on. Thanks for your time, sir. It's been great yeah. Good to meet you. You know, real pleasure. You, I hope you, you guys send me say send me a DM on my on my on my um Instagram. We'll do, we'll do. And I definitely yeah. need that the picture of that album cover. I will, I'll send it to you. With, I'll the, send with it. the um, I'll send signatures. I've got it on my phone. Yeah, I've got it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, Sheldon. Yeah, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. You know, thank you for the listeners for showing up. And Clarell, thank you once again. I said it. Um, you just the stories that you shared, um, and filling in the gaps of the, the history during that time period. And then, you know, I'm also really just gaining a lot of uh, insight, a lot of inspiration from your spirit because sometimes, you know, when you look at what success is, you know, sometimes we can kind of get wrapped up in one dimension of one example or one linear um aspect of success so if our career doesn't, doesn't ha the straight trajectory doesn't happen we can kind of get upset but you know the energy that you have the spirit that you have in terms of just looking at everything and not looking at it I, the biggest thing is that you were there you know but you don't look at it like you know i, I missed the boat or i failed mm -hmm. or whatever and then you were very super transparent because a lot of people are not doing that or there, or there's some bitterness and all things like that. So really, I, I really appreciate you being transparent, sharing your stories. Very inspiring, very motivating. So you know, thank you for your time, brother. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Thank you. I feel the same way about you, man. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then for me, it's always the fact that I, you know, I could, I, you know, that you, you made, you made it, you made your time. I asked you, and you said, sure, no thing. And so that to me, it's, 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 it just shows the nature of yourself. Um, but as I said, from that first interview, um, just seeing that you weren't living in the past and you weren't bitter, it, it's just the most remarkable thing. And that's part of why we do this stuff is to showcase that actually most of us are going to go through ups and downs and to see people in the spotlight go through ups and downs and still be able to see past that um, and still say, yep, yeah, messed up, made some mistakes. Hey, but you know what? I still have, I still got the, re I still have time to make, make, make up for that. That's that's a remarkable right. thing. So that's we definitely right. appreciate you for that. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's inspiring. It's the the joy and your creativity. It shows, man. I watch your videos. You know, just yeah. See yeah. the energy, man. See the joy. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'll do this again, man. Yeah, no, don't worry. Yeah, definitely, we, we, we'll we'll do so. So we thank you, Corell, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll Stevie and Sharon will hit you up uh, on 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 IG and stuff, and and uh, hey, yeah. One question, Nam, did you ever do you ever come to um, America? 
I haven't yet in not in a while. Um, you know, maybe next year because um, as things settle out. But yeah, it, it, I, I, I was always visualizing that if we if we had to do to do our podcast, we go to Atlanta or, or fly to New York. But yes, maybe next year. That 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 seems to be the plan. Yeah, keep, yeah, that, that, keep me keep me updated with that. No, definitely. But anyway, appreciate it, and we'll we'll, we'll yeah we'll as I said we'll we'll get you back soon and 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 keep out for anything. So, but um, also I'll post the fact that you, it is um is it NY Coaching, NYC NYC Vocal Charm School, NYC Vocal Charm School. The last time we did an interview, you had the little logo at the back. But anyway, NYC Vocal Charm School. Yeah. If but if 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 you um if you guys were to search. <laughs> Nah, yeah. that's dope. Oh man. Yeah, if you search for him, uh, if you just search Karel Hansen um, on on IG or, or or Facebook or even on Google, it will take you to his IG page and stuff, so you can follow and see the fact that he's doing, he's coaching um, different artists um, and showing them how to to get their vocals up and stuff. So just yeah, follow if you need vocal coaching, you can hit yeah. him up as well. Yeah, another good another oh. good page to go to is my um inst- my um YouTube page, is, which is just Vocal Charm School. A lot of good stuff on. Okay, there. I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Corella. Uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Care, I'll see y'all soon. All right. Take care. Now. Thank you again. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So wow, he he was doing. Um, Teddy, Teddy Jam. Yeah, I thought I, I thought that was Mary and Marsha doing that, man. I didn't even know. Wow. Oh goodness, she just dropped it out as if yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, Stevie, are you, I, I wonder if you were as tired as I was yesterday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm feeling it's been a long one this evening. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Well, it's been great. So. Um, yeah, next week we we are we're, we're due to do the future album, and uh, we may get a guest on that. We may get somebody from um, from the GR, the the guy uh, crew who 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 might help us with that. But if not, we we, we we you know we'll definitely get somebody to help us as we count down our top ten favorite tracks on the future album. So that's next week Sunday. But um, yeah, so for all of us, we want to thank you guys for as ever for always being making this making this um, make, making this fun, and hopefully you enjoyed Corel in, in there. It was longer than uh, our normal stuff, but you know, it, this is this is this history with him having it now. So next week, the future album. But thanks a lot, guys, for watching. <laughs>